all the people lived as usual. But two weeks later, absolutely everything had changed. The world was a completely different place than before. There were still people who lived here. There were dead people walking the streets. How could this happen? This is a very bad situation. In the midst of this nightmare, our hero collects medicine from the pharmacy for survival. Behind him walk zombies, but he didn't care. He only looked at them with anger and disgust. He gathered all the necessary medicine and left the building. Huh, there are so many of them. It's like a pack of crocodiles. Damn zombies. I might have to take the middle route, he said. The zombies did not react to his screams or to the fact that he was different from them. Someone needs to get rid of these dead people. But most likely all the garbage collectors are already dead. One of the zombies knocked our hero, and he was frightened out of his wits. He loaded his shotgun and pointed it at the dead man, but he got scared and ran away. Well, it's not that important. It's a good thing their vision has atrophied to the point where they can't even see me. All they have left is their sense of smell. I'll be perfectly safe as long as they can't smell me, he said. Our hero was perplexed. Why did people die by such brainless creatures? If he had known about it earlier, things would not have turned out this way. Everyone chose the easy path to salvation. Escape. From a tall building, a zombie was watching him. But he wasn't like the rest of the dead. He was smarter than that. Our hero noticed it and was horrified. He could not believe his eyes. Just what did he look at me? It can't be, he said turning his head in different directions. When he looked away for a second, the zombie was gone. He saw the zombie coming down the elevator. Why is he doing this? With fear, said the hero. All trembling with fear, he pointed the shotgun at the exit. He was surprised that a zombie could use the elevator. When the zombie stepped off the elevator, he had a scary grin on his face. They must also have a diminished intellect, and only their sense of smell must have remained. So why is this zombie heading toward me and looking at me with his dead eyes? The other zombies never noticed me, the survivor said. He pointed his shotgun at the zombie, but by some miracle he was able to dodge the shotgun blast. The man thought he was just lucky. He could not believe that the zombie dodged a bullet. He has killed more frightening dead men than this one. When he fired, the bullet grazed his head. But he kept smiling and walking forward toward the man. The survivor panicked and started to reload the shotgun, but the cartridge didn't want to go in and ended up flying out. The zombie was smarter than he thought. He took a bottle filled with blood and threw it right under the feet of our hero. It shattered and spurted blood. The blood flew onto the suit. Blood! shouted the man. It gave off a scent that the zombies could tell where he was. And at that moment, all the zombies became like hungry dogs who saw a piece of meat. They quickly began to run to the smell of blood. Stay back, shouted the survivor. Zombies. The first zombie appeared three weeks ago. The reason for this is not known. Characteristics of zombies. Move slowly. Vision is atrophied. Do not react to sounds. Sensitive to the smell of blood. There are zombies with residual intelligence. Our hero began to run away from them in parallel shooting at them. Damn, at this rate, I won't have long to live, he thought. But at the last moment, he saw an iron grate behind which he decided to hide. He ran in there and locked it. The zombies tried to break through there, but nothing worked. That's it. Let's see those brainless zombies open it now. But something happened that he never expected. That clever zombie opened the bars. He started running away from them in terror until he found the car. He got in it, and his plan was to drive to school. The clever zombie heard this, and with a smile on his face, school. Meanwhile, there were drills going on at the school. They usually extend their arms forward, so you hit their arms first. That way you get a chance to dodge and hit them. Hit it right in the center of the head. After these words, the mannequin went flying all over the classroom. Even if you hit him from that distance, you can kill him, said the teacher. One of the students asked the question, had the teacher ever killed a zombie? 
to which he replied, no. The students wondered why he was teaching them how to kill zombies even though he had never killed one himself. Some of the students were uncomfortable living at school and wanted to go home sooner. Some were angry. Some were crying. But there were also those who did not want to see wimps among their entourage. Some students were concerned that they couldn't get a signal so they couldn't know what was going on in the world right now. Some weren't even worried about zombies coming to their apartment. Since it is high up, two of the students asked the teacher, Are we sure we will be saved? To which he replied, don't worry. There are children who have not heard about the cancellation of the holiday, so the teachers also came to school, okay? The teacher challenged one of the students to show his skills on a mannequin. You just have to hit the dummy, right? The student asked. The teacher replied, yes, think of it as a zombie. The student failed the assignment because he was swinging the bat and the teacher told him not to. During these events, a girl came into the classroom and said that it was time for a shift. Student Sung, Hoon, had to go to the roof. He walked up the stairs, and when he came out on the roof in the dazzling light, he saw a beautiful girl. It looked like he liked her. Her name is Yuna. He said for the next two hours on the roof, she could go, but she refused. She decided to stay with him. Hong began to recall moments with her how he always rode the same bus as her. But she probably doesn't know that. Every time he sees her on the bus, he always imagines how there is only this bus left in the world. Yuna should be with me, he said. I'm sorry. I don't want to disturb you. I just want to watch the sunset, she said. To which he awkwardly replied, No. It's okay. I'm probably the one you don't like being with. Yuna looked at the sunset and said, Beautiful, isn't it? Anyway, the sky is as beautiful as it is now. Always. Why did I only realize beauty when the world got so twisted? She looked at the zombies and said, So maybe they're still alive, aren't they? The guy replied, They're not human. They're already dead. It's a zombie. They wondered, I wonder what they were thinking. Hoon said they were corpses. How can they think? The guy thought, we need to change the subject urgently, or her opinion of me will definitely fall flat. But at that moment, his thought was interrupted by a car that drove and hit all the zombies in its path. Eventually, the survivor lost control and crashed into a tree. It turned out to be a teacher at that school. The people on duty on the roof were glad to see him alive. His overalls got caught in the seat of the car, and he couldn't reach his leg. As he tried to pull it out, many zombies gathered around. They all smelled blood and started running toward him. You know, I always manage to escape from danger, he said, and tore off a piece of his suit, freeing his leg in the process. He began to run away from them. When he reached the school grounds, the teacher climbed over the fence. He ran inside. The students on the roof saw this and ran down to him. When they ran, they told the class that he was back, he was alive. Opening the lock on the chain, the student let him in. After taking off his mask, he sprayed himself with spray. The teacher saw a zombie standing outside the window behind the fence. He pointed his shotgun at him and shot out the window. The second teacher didn't like it. He said, what are you doing in front of school children? Those zombies couldn't even get over the fence. Why do it in front of them? To which he replied, What if we don't kill them and they climb over the fence? Can you risk your life to go looking for medicine like I did? If not me, who would want to go there, said the man. He said he'd seen things that people like you, who are just chilling in class, can't imagine. Hong started coughing. The teacher noticed this and remembered that he had asthma. He gave him the pills he almost died for. He said, The drug is drowsy so you might be napping for a while. The pills helped the boy noticeably. He got better. Yuna supported him, but he was embarrassed and thanked her. Their ambience was interrupted by the sound of a car. It turned out to be a bus, mooching right through the school gates. The teacher ordered everyone to hide while simultaneously loading his shotgun. The bus broke through the fence and crashed into the school building. The teachers ordered all the students to go up to the second floor. 
The situation was tense. It turned out that the bus driver was the same zombie who'd been chasing the teacher outside. The bus was followed by the rest of the zombies, who saw that the fence had been broken. One by one, the zombies raced into the school. The teacher pointed his shotgun at the driver, but he came back and ran away. The rest of the zombies were already making their way into the school. The teacher began to kill the zombies one by one. It turned out that the trainer's teacher's name was Sam. He was very afraid of zombies. And when they attacked him, he didn't apply his skills as on the dummy. He just covered his face with his hands. A teacher with a shotgun saved him at the last moment. He ordered him to evacuate all the children, and he himself would deal with the zombies. Some students were still in class, but at the last moment, some ran away and some were eaten by zombies. The student began to defend himself with the bat, as Sam had taught him, but it did him no good. The zombie bit him right on the arm. Quickly run through the door, said the teacher. All the students began to go in droves. Hong saw among the crowd that Yuna was nowhere to be found, and it was only when he got back that he saw the terrible thing. He saw the rest of the students running up, and the middle one was Yuna. But unfortunately, the zombie had caught her feet. He cried out in horror. Yuna! The teacher said it was too late, that he could not save her. Yuna screamed for someone to help. Hong said, Give me three seconds, in which time I can save her. The teacher was serious. He was about to close the door, he said. Last chance. After that, the door will not open. The guy did not think long and ran to save the girl. The teacher closed the door. There was no chance to get in. The guy took down the zombie with a jump, thereby freeing the girl. Yuna, are you all right? He asked. But her legs were not in the best condition. They got up and started running through the crowd. They went into an empty classroom and hid there. He saw his classmate in the passageway, but he was already dead. The zombie came at Han sharply, but Hoon managed to close the door at the last moment before he attacked him. The boy stared at him in horror and remembered what he had been like. He felt sorry for him. At that moment, he felt sick and quickly took a pill from his jacket pocket and ate it. I took the last asthma pill, the guy said. He watched the horrific sight of a huge mob of zombies breaking into their classroom. He could see that the glass was breaking, and it was about to burst. It's a really bad situation. Even so, the door can still hold for a while, the guy said. But suddenly, without noticing, his beloved turned into a zombie. Everything happened so fast that she had time to bite him. From the bite, Hong fell to the floor and lost consciousness. The zombies realized that the man had been eliminated and stopped breaking into the classroom. They just walked down the corridor, just like they did outside. We are shown that after a zombie bite, the person is definitely dead. He has no pulse, his blood clots, and then 10 or 30 minutes later, he comes back to life and becomes a zombie. A few minutes later, Hong woke up, but he didn't look human. He was different from the others. He became a zombie. It was just something unbelievable, and he wasn't a mindless zombie like the others. He felt like a human being, but at one time he was a zombie. He said, I don't remember anything. Did I become a zombie? Walking is very hard. It's like I'm trapped in one place, like I'm in a confined space. Why do I? He asked who I was. It was dark everywhere, and he looked at Yuna and didn't know what was going on. He felt absolutely nothing. Meanwhile, the other survivors were very frightened. The teacher said, Try to count how many people are left. In the end, 19 people survived. Is everyone okay? No one is hurt or bitten. You don't have to lie. Answer honestly, said the teacher. They had to be completely sure that they were safe. The students closed all the windows and one person from each class took turns being on duty. So we're locked in on the second floor? asked one of the students. Luckily, the dining room and cafeteria are on the second floor, so we don't have to worry about anything. The teacher reassured them. Anyway, we'll be rescuing from the air, so the second floor is the best solution now. So don't whine and be brave, he said.
the students told how they saw their friends being bitten by zombies. But Sam reassured them by saying that they wouldn't be saved anytime soon, and in a few days, they would live their normal lives. The students were very concerned about their safety, but all the teacher had to do was tell them everything was going to be okay. The atmosphere changed to cheerful, but at one point, everyone became sad again. The teacher told everyone to put down the curtains, as it was already nighttime. When one student lowered the curtains, he didn't close them right away. First, he shined the light on the zombie. He recognized the zombie as his former classmate. Two students were discussing what was going on outside the window. Well, their conversation was interrupted by the rest of the class, telling them to close the curtains. Don't you understand the situation we're in, or are you just messing with me on purpose? said one of the students. Follow the teacher's rules. There was light coming in from outside, though, and the woman in the cap saw it. Hong felt himself drowning in water, he thought. It is unknown where the bottom is. My body is disintegrating into pieces and is restored to one point, shrinking into a tiny black hole, my consciousness slowly fading away. He sees a memory of how he talked to Yuna. Hey, you're waking up late, aren't you? She asked. The first day, Yuna spoke to me. At that moment, a soft scent of shampoo wafted over me. In his memory, he remembered almost being late for class. But Yuna came up with a plan that they wouldn't be scolded. And so he came back to reality. He thought, if I remember Yuna, yeah, right? I think my consciousness is back. I feel. Where am I now? He saw Yuna next to him, and he said, Yuna. Yuna stood motionless. He thought, even though it's blurry to see something, my body is still. He saw a door in front of him that he wanted to open, but it didn't work the first time because he couldn't get used to his body. At first, he yanked it open, but then he was able to grab the handle and open it. When he opened the door in front of him, he saw students who had already turned into zombies. They were standing motionless. At one point, they started to smell something. Then they abruptly ran somewhere. Hong wondered where they were all going. But after a moment, he began to smell what they were smelling, and he ran after them himself. His heart began to beat faster. All of his vein organs, including his blood vessels, began to work faster. He took off in a moment and ran after them. It turned out that they smelled that girl in the cap. She was just sitting on the fence. The other zombies, including Hun, started attacking her. Damn, I got caught, said the girl panically. The zombies had already begun to climb the fence where she stood. There seemed to be no way out. A zombie grabbed her leg. She began to fall. At the last moment, she grabbed the fence with her hands. She began to fight off the dead men with her legs. Hoon smelled her. He climbed over everyone and threw himself at her. She kicked him in the face so that he flew off. As she ran across the bus, she snagged on the second floor windows of the school and started climbing through them. She knocked on the window where a frightened student saw her. She said, Open up, please. Hong thought, The moment my pulse raced and the angry feelings that were overwhelming me vanished in an instant. I was obsessed running toward my goal like a madman. But now, everything is very calm. It's like everything is fine. I'm only dead. Hong wandered off into the morning and thought about it for a long time. Am I dead? Or am I still alive? Something between life and death. He remembers a physics lesson where he showed them an experiment. The point is that there is a cat in a box. It has a 50 chance of dying within an hour. And the question was whether the cat was alive or dead. It was something like Hoon's situation. If he had wanted to, he would have gotten out. I'm still alive. I want to go home, said Hong. Meanwhile, when the teacher was asleep, the classmates let a strange woman into their hiding place, who miraculously escaped death. But they were out of luck at this point. The teacher did wake up, he said. Freeze. Who gave you permission to open the window? Hey, duty officer, explain yourself. He said frightenedly, she told me to let her in. She's still alive. To which he replied, I told you. 
Don't let anyone in without my permission. Are you going to let any survivor in without my permission? Now the teacher spoke to the woman. Prove immediately that you are healthy, she said with consternation. Did he come here too? The girl said. You had a gun. I heard gunshots. Of course, there was a cold weapon, because everyone only has kitchen utensils. Even with your gun, it's not so easy to deal with zombies. As she spoke, the girl put the muzzle of her shotgun to her forehead. She continued, To kill these creatures accurately and quickly, you have to shoot right here. When in doubt, pull the trigger. We're all going to be zombies one day anyway. If that's the case, wouldn't it be better to die quickly and not suffer? On the other hand, though, one bullet is also a waste, isn't it? After these words, the teacher took the shotgun away from the girl's head, then said, No one else is allowed inside without my permission. If you find one, it will be bad for him. The girl asked again about someone who was here. The teacher froze at these words. Afterwards, they went into the office and started talking. The girl said, Since we know that zombies don't respond much to our sounds and can't understand our speech, I thought that hiding in, well, protected buildings didn't make much sense. Later, she told a story where on the roof, with the survivors, she was waiting for help. But suddenly, she saw a strange creature. As it turned out, they called it to them, though, in fact, they had no idea who it was. The girl from the roof shouted out the intercom password to him. He entered it as if nothing had happened and went up to them. The teacher said, intellectually, he is a human being. Although physically different, yesterday he rammed the school gate, and we ended up losing the first floor. The girl was shocked by what she heard. Then she continued her story. This zombie took a jar filled with blood and threw it into the entranceway of the survivors. And then, the rest of the zombies ran in at the smell of the blood. The girl immediately jumped from one house to another, but the other residents could not do so. No matter how much she asked them, they wouldn't even move. When the zombies came in, the survivors began to fight back. Completely kill the zombies. Could not all who were on the roof were infected type result turned into zombies? except for the girl. The girl simply rushed away from the fateful building. And so last night she came to the sound of gunshots and saw the light in that school. She finished her story. Then they found out that this clever zombie looks for a place with a crowd of people and attracts zombies there. At the same time, it is good to think of a strategy. In between, Hong came to his house, his whole house was covered in blood, and the front door was open but there was no one at home. He said, it looks like they've been here before. And there were zombies passing by in the entryway. The guy continued, even carefully guarded high-rise buildings were taken over so easily. Maybe zombies are stupid, but is there anyone among them with remnants of consciousness like me? There seem to be some. Zombies whose case is similar to mine. Besides, mom and dad must be somewhere too even if they are already zombies. The stranger knew something about rescuers. She said, The rescuers aren't coming. We heard a helicopter combing the area, but at some point the sounds disappeared. Maybe he stumbled upon the creature. Anyway, we heard on the megaphone that an Air Force transport plane was due to land at a military base nearby. Meanwhile, rumors were starting to circulate around the school that there would be no rescue workers. The guy with the glasses who heard them talking brought them food. The guys who heard about the rescuers were thinking of a plan. They had to get on the plane first. If they didn't, they would die like those losers on the first floor. The guys wanted to go to the airport on motorcycles. But the guy with the glasses told them to take him too, because he was fifth in his grades and knew the way to the airport well. He will help them avoid zombies. The guys decide to take him with them. They justify it by saying that they can sacrifice one person. They don't care if he's smart or dumb. The girl who was sitting in the room with the teachers said she would leave tomorrow. She would stay at school for one day. The teacher offers to take all the students along with the girl. They plan to provide security for them. 
but the girl refuses because she says they can only take a couple of people with them. She says, The plane can, of course, hold all the survivors who are here, but the question is how to get there. The teacher doubts that the information about the plane was true. The girl assured me that this was reliable information. There is a U.S. Air Force base at Sonami Airport, and according to her, U.S. troops are being withdrawn from it. The teacher said, Okay, if we believe it and go there, but eat and everyone will be killed. Who will take responsibility for this? Why take responsibility at all? Looking forward to the most favorable chances of survival, she said. The point is that teachers are worried about the safety of students. The school is safe because I'm guarding it, the teacher said. But suddenly, they heard a noise outside. It turned out to be the students who took their bikes and went to the airport. Teacher Sam was surprised and realized that they were children. They must have heard our conversation. Which way did they go? I hope they can survive, said the teacher. Meanwhile, the guys on motorcycles rode through the city. As they rode, they almost got grabbed by a zombie. But on the one hand, they had fun being able to ride without a helmet and ignore the traffic lights. At one point, they saw another motorcycle and they stopped. They stopped outside the store. The guy said, let's hurry up. It's not the right time to change. They went into a clothing store. At a time like this, they were picking out their clothes. Looking at the prices did not say that they certainly did not buy that about themselves. But here, the zombies smelled them. They tried to open the door. The guy with the glasses really panicked. The zombies broke down the door. Step away, said the guy, and kicked the door in with his foot. They had a club and a bat in their hands. They kept hitting all the zombies with them. They kept hitting them and hitting them. It was easy. Really, no big deal. Zombies disappointed me, the guy said. They changed the motorcycle and put on some cool music. To the bass of this music, they clubbed the zombies that got in their way. The club was already becoming more bloody. All the zombies they encountered were headless. That's an awesome feeling. But Hong got in their way. The guy with the glasses noticed him. Target found, said the driver. He swung in. The guy with the glasses tilted the motorcycle at the last moment that it just went around him, and the driver didn't take his club to Hun's face. What are you doing? Are you sick? I'm sorry. That was my classmate. Hyun Ho said, You're looking for death. If you're tired of living, get off my bike and get the hell out of here. No, if Yoon Ho leaves, who will show us the way? Where do we go next? Said the second motorcyclist. To the right, said Hyun Ho. Let's go. And they rushed off again. At the same time, Hong began to cry. He said there was nothing he could do. The body moves on its own. He doesn't even feel pain. It's like a lump in his throat and his heart is aching. Tears roll down his cheeks, but he feels no sadness, no pain, nothing. If he had been finished off at once, he could have gone to the next world in peace. What can he do in his condition? He responds to the smell of blood. He's just a pathetic zombie. In the meantime, the teachers give out portions to the students. It turned out that there wasn't enough food for everyone. It looked like we were out of food altogether. Like Sam said, there should have been enough for three months. But something had gone wrong. Well, kids, today you're going to eat bread. It's good too. Everyone has already guessed that there is no more food. It is even known that three students escaped on motorcycles. It turned out that Sam had made a mistake. He didn't take the rest of the food that was on the first floor. He asked the teacher in overalls to get it. It's not as dangerous on the first floor anymore. But the problem is that my clothes are splattered with blood. You have a shotgun. What's the problem? Asked the girl. It is only needed for emergencies. Which this one is not, the teacher answered. Sam intervened in their argument and said, It was my own fault that I couldn't get the food because the school was broken into by zombies. I'll go quickly and get the food. I can't take care of the kids, so I'll do something useful and bring food. He took his baton with him and gripped it tightly. The girl gave him some perfume to hide his scent. 
at least for a while. She spritzed him, and he went. The teacher asked the children, Children, have you all eaten? Don't worry about the food. Most of the supplies are on the first floor. We'll pick it up as soon as we get a chance. If anyone is very hungry, they can come downstairs with us and get their own food. Do you trust me above? The children all responded, Yes. Meanwhile, Sam opened the door and looked, for there was no one there. He walked quietly down the stairs. When he looked out of the corner, there was a zombie, but luckily he didn't see it. Sam sidestepped him and walked on. He opened the lock, and going inside, he saw that all the food supplies were in place. In the meantime, Hong was thinking, I'm alone. I have no one to share my feelings with. I have no one who understands me. There is no one else here. He tripped and fell. As he was lying on the ground, he heard the smell of gasoline. When he stood up, he saw Yuna in front of him. She was laughing, and he said, Laughs. Laughter is a feeling. Maybe Yuna hasn't lost her ability to feel human feelings yet. If that's true, maybe there's still hope. It's possible to ride a motorcycle to the north of Canyon. Amazing. Now, we're just going straight ahead. Yes. Wow. That's the first time I've seen a train stop. A lot of people can't get off. The guy threw the stick away, but whoever was driving behind him picked it up. It was very chaotic on the outside. Not at all human. If we had just stayed in the school, we wouldn't have known. I'm sick of killing zombies. Hey, stop it. Shit. Do you want to destroy all the zombies in the way? Why? After all, they are slow, and we just kill them while driving. I said, stop it. Are you crazy? Didn't you hear my words? We still have a long way to go. Do you want to die? Meanwhile, that awful zombie was staring at them from the building. Sam noticed that someone was walking around the school. It looked like a person, not a zombie. I thought I heard someone's footsteps. It didn't sound like a zombie. How could a human be alive? He peeked out to see who was there, but it turned out to be a zombie. He managed to get back in at the last moment. Meanwhile, in the school library, Hong noticed extreme concentration. It's always been that way. So it's very, very easy to be a high school champion. In fact, there is no difference with the state of the brain. Usually all brain function ceases when dead. But since all that is left is the smell, the brain begins to function when a person smells. Yes, even when I was in the dark, I woke up to the smell of Yuna's shampoo. Yuna also woke up from the darkness because of the smell of a human being. But why am I the only one who doesn't fall asleep? Even more than just not falling asleep, my ability to learn grew endlessly through my extreme concentration. Because I was bitten under the influence of the drug, the stimulation effect persists and continues permanently. Sam got food, but because his hands were full, he left the bat in the pantry. Hoon smelled Sam's scent. The smell of a man. Someone's coming. I'm so hungry. Suddenly, a zombie appeared behind Sam, but it wasn't Hoon. The zombie came at him sharply as he carried the boxes. Sam tossed the boxes aside and started running. The zombie kept running after him, and yet he couldn't bite him because Hoon had his back. Sam turned around and saw Hoon, but he was a zombie and he was afraid of him. The zombie tried to eat Sam, but at the last moment, Hoon held him back. He saved Sam by being a zombie. Sam quickly went up to the second floor, opened the door, and ran in. Nightmare face to face with a real zombie. But this one is not like the others, he said, soothing himself. Suddenly, there was a knock at his door. When he opened the door, he was surprised. There were boxes of food. He brought their shelter on the second floor as if nothing had happened. Everyone was surprised that he was able to bring all the supplies. Meanwhile, the school children were riding their motorcycles on the highway. But suddenly, a truck drove behind them. What? A truck? Where did he come from? The truck hit everything in its path. It spared nothing. As it turned out, 
The driver was the scary, smart zombie. The guys saw him and gave him the gas. The truck was already close to them. They drove as fast as they could. Because there were abandoned cars on the road, they could not get away from it. The truck crashed into the car and it flew right into the motorcycle that Hyun Ho was on. They went down. And then the driver switched to June. He also hit him. Luckily, everyone survived. The truck becomes not far from them. He started to lift up the back of the truck, which had a bunch of zombies in it. They came off it like ants, one by one. The guys noticed this and started to run away, but just in time, they noticed that there were zombies on the other side too. They were surrounded. Hun Ho suggested climbing the beams as they were on the bridge. The guys praised him for the idea and ran to the beams. The guy in the helmet started pushing June, telling him to climb faster. But at one point, he slipped and almost fell into the crowd of zombies. But at the last moment, he managed to grab the beam with his hand. June called them names and told them to hurry up and help him. But his friend had his doubts about saving him, because he was acting very brazen. The zombies had almost got his leg. He was screaming as hard as he could. But still, his friend betrayed him. And June fell down. He went further up the beam, stepped on He his said hand. they had to go down it. The zombies also kept up with them. They climbed up the beams but fell down. The students climbed over to the other side of the beam and rolled down. But unfortunately, there was a zombie waiting for them from below. He asked where they were going. To which Hyun Ho replied, to the airport tsunami. He said he would drive them there. When the guy in the back saw that Yoon Ho was being put in the trunk, he was surprised and asked, who's that? But he had no time to think, for the zombies had already climbed up on him. He moved down without a second thought, but he caught on a sheet of metal, which caused him to fall face, first onto the pavement. The zombie saw this and grabbed him by the scruff of the neck and dragged him to the car. Hyun Ho woke up to the fact that the zombies wanted to get into his cage. Yes, he was in a cage. Suddenly, somewhere on the side, he heard a voice. Take it easy. They can't get to you here. Take a breath. We're here for the long haul. In the background of this conversation, his friend was screaming in the next cage. Get lost, the girl continued. Look over there. Do you see who's sitting there? I think he's doing some kind of experiment on us. Experiment? Asked Hyun Ho. As it turned out, this monster was experimenting on people. He put them in a cage and then took them out one by one and experimented on them. The girl was valuable to him because she worked in the lab. Meanwhile, at the school, the men on duty were standing on the roof. From below, they saw a light in the library. They went to tell it to Sam, the teacher. Since they trusted him more, they told him, and he went. Is he the one who helped me? Who is he? The food. Was it his doing? Well, it couldn't have come by itself. Someone must have brought it, he thought to himself. And at that moment, the electricity in the school went out. Hong noticed this and pulled out the school knowledge manual. Sam didn't want to go down because it was too dangerous. Hong went to the fuse. He saw that the arrow was at zero, so he poured gasoline into the funnel. The generator started and the light came on. Sam heard the generator running and went back. The children praised him and were thrilled that he was so brave and that he did well. But one question plagued him. The students praised him as much as they could. Everyone in the cage was talking about the virus. The primary mutation has something in common with the flu. The next step is lingering depression. It is unknown whether the situation will improve. Most modern people already suffer from depression. In addition to depression and weakness, they feel a thirst that cannot be quenched no matter what they drink. And then the infected become obsessed with only one thing, the lust to kill people. Their conversation was interrupted by the whistle of that clever zombie. And at that moment, the others fell behind the humans as if nothing had happened and were going back. It looked like they had been trained by that zombie. Hey, you zombie, let's go out one-on-one. -on -one. After these words, the cage opened. Come out, he said. The man got up in a stance, and he was ready to fight. 
but the zombie didn't want to fight him. He stepped back and an already infected June, with duct tape on his face, walked up to the kid. They fought among themselves. June almost bit him, but at the last moment, the boy pushed him away. He landed heavy blows on June, but when the man swung, June stopped his arm. He struck back right in the stomach, then in the face, and a few moments later, the guy fell to the ground, covered in blood. Hyun Ho and the woman were amazed that the zombie could use boxing. They thought he remembered a time when he was human and could feel emotions. The zombie started attacking the guy while he was lying down, but he didn't want to give up, so he started to fight back. The guy screamed for help. Then he kicked him in the face. The duct tape that June was wearing came off. June grabbed his leg and scratched him. The boy had difficulty moving, so he began to crawl. Soon, the zombie killed his former friend. Whoever set this up was sitting on top watching the whole thing. And when the fun was over, the zombie turned off the lights. Meanwhile, at school, Hong was studying something. He went to the school laboratory to get blood samples. He pulled out a bag of blood. And even though he had his nose covered with a rag, he had the urge to drink it. In the school bunker, the girls dissuaded Miss Su Jin from leaving them as she was protected by all the teachers, and the others liked her. On the other hand, the girl said that the chances of rescuers finding survivors in the buildings were extremely small, and that it was much more advantageous for them to join survivors like her, who had heard the news about the rescuers and gathered at the airport. She was talking about a special shelter where all the survivors would be taken. It was a room with everything needed for a good life. Some students overheard the girls talking and asked her to take them with her, as everyone wanted to live. Meanwhile, it was daytime. The cells were empty. Hyun Ho woke up and told the girl that the door was open. All the zombies were gone. The girl's first thought was that it was all a trap. They got out of the cage and started looking around. At school, Sam was surprised that all the students wanted to go with Miss Su Jin. All she said in her defense was that she didn't force them. They had decided to do it themselves. Another teacher overheard and reminded them that if someone left the school, they would lose their protection and be on their own. He gave the students a choice. Stay in school or go with the girl. After these words, Sam said he would go with her too. Hong took the bag of blood and began pouring it on the floor, creating a path. The other zombies in the corridor smelled the blood and instantly ran towards him. It turned out that Hong wanted to train them. Meanwhile, Ms. Su Jin's group was counting all the students who were going with her. The girl had a plan, but she hadn't anticipated there would be so many people. She had to revise it. There were 10 of them in total. First, they had to find transportation. Sam and Ms. Su Jin went in search of it, but Sam was afraid and said he didn't have a driver's license. Ms. Su Jin jumped out of the window and noticed something strange. There were no zombies around. As it turned out, the zombies were in the lab with Hoon. Eventually, the zombies stopped smelling the blood, and Hoon had to open another bag. He struggled to tear it open because it was very dense, like human muscle. Eventually, he managed to tear it open, but unfortunately, the blood spilled on him, attracting the zombies. The zombie tried to bite his arm, but luckily, he had wrapped duct tape around his body so he wasn't afraid of being bitten. Hoon realized that the second blood pack had little effect. Perhaps he needed warm blood. But obtaining it seemed almost impossible. He took off his mask to taste the blood, but his zombie instincts kicked in, and he even wanted to eat his own hand. However, at the last moment, he stopped himself. He took a little blood from the floor on his finger and tasted it. He was not himself. The blood was so delicious that he wanted more. But Hong intervened just in time. Meanwhile, Miss Su Jin went in search of a car and once again was surprised that there were no zombies around. She approached a car, broke into it, started the engine, and drove back to the school, calling for the others to come down. Sam, the teacher, went first to check if there were any zombies below. When he didn't find any, he called out to the children and led them down. Some people had doubts about whether they should go or not, 
But if they had made up their minds, they should go. They quickly descended and got into the car. At the same moment, all the zombies in the lab began to sense something. They abruptly turned their attention elsewhere, including Hong, who forgot to put on his mask. As the children were getting into the car, Teacher Sam saw zombies running towards them. He hurried the students and jumped into the trunk. Sam instructed Miss Sujin to drive. However, the car wouldn't start, and Sam and the student in the trunk started kicking away the persistent undead. The car was already surrounded by zombies, and at the last minute, it started up, allowing everyone to drive away. The zombies were unable to catch up, and they fell to the ground. Hong ran after the car, unable to fully control himself without a mask. He couldn't stop himself and jumped on top of the car, using his fingers to grab onto the trunk. He grabbed Jivan's leg and dragged him behind. Jivan and the zombie were already behind them. Hong struggled to control himself and not bite Jivan. He forced himself to restrain his instincts. But ultimately, he succumbed and bit his classmate. Everyone was tense after this incident, and they were sorry to lose another person. Miss Su Jin asked Sam to close the trunk of the car, which he did. The students were shocked by what they had witnessed. The teacher reminded them to avoid dangerous situations, and Jivan became an example for them. They realized that they had a good defense that others didn't have, and it was their responsibility to keep the school safe. They were not obliged to protect the children who were leaving. In unison, everyone decided that they were not going anywhere. Outside, Hong apologized to his friend for not being able to control himself. One thing Miss Su Jin hadn't considered was that the driveways were closed, and they had no way to proceed. One of the kids suggested taking the bike path along the river, which wasn't a bad option, but it would be challenging to reach. Eventually, they had to find a way around the blocked cars. Meanwhile, Hyun Ho and the girl managed to escape their captivity by rail. It was a good idea, she praised the guy. She asked if Hyun Ho had been bullied at school, to which he replied, yes. However, she took offense when he called her aunt and insisted he call her professor to match her professional position. As they were talking, Hyun Ho noticed a boy at the train window. He offered to help him, but the professor refused, stating they shouldn't help everyone. She believed that helping the child would only cause them trouble and didn't want to assist him. Hyun Ho looked out the window and saw the boy and a seemingly dead zombie lying on the floor feeling called weak and cowardly at school. He decided to help the boy. He picked up a rock and shouted for him to step back. The boy threw the stone through the train window, climbed onto the train, and offered to take the other boy with him. The boy replied, My mother came for me too. As they looked at the dead zombie, it turned out to be the boy's mother who immediately pounced on him. It turned out that the woman had tied herself to the rail so that she wouldn't accidentally eat her baby. But here they were, out of luck, because the shoelaces couldn't hold and tore. Hyun Ho pushed the boy away and stood in front of him. But behind him, from another wagon, another zombie wanted to sneak up on them. In the end, they were surrounded on both sides. It turned out that there was a professor in the next carriage, and she took a fire extinguisher and hit the zombie on the head. The girl beat him until he fell down. She said she had to get out of here quickly. Taking the boy, Hyun Ho left the carriage. They quickly ran away from that place. The boy thanked the professor for saving him. The boy started asking for the boy's name. He answered, Rayhan. The boy spent ten nights in the wagon. When he and his mother went to the park, they had food and juice. So Ray could not go hungry. But then a monster attacked him and his mother. He hid on the train because the monster hurt his leg and bit his mom. He told how his mother tied herself up so she wouldn't eat him. She turned it into a game. Ray didn't realize that he couldn't bring his mother back. He wanted her to stop playing, but that was impossible. Friends came to the airport. The professor didn't even know he was here. They were surveying the area when suddenly a drone appeared overhead. After it was spotted, it flew off somewhere. The professor thought for sure there were survivors here. She went to the gate, and it was surprisingly open. She opened it and saw a crowd of zombies in military uniforms. She was horrified when she saw it. 
The zombie was about to bite her, but the professor closed the doors at the last moment and pinned the dead man between the aisles. Hunho began to help close the doors. There was no way they could stand up to the zombie forces, as they were head and shoulders, stronger than humans. Suddenly, the Americans were talking to them from the tower. They were perplexed as to what was going on here. They told them to stand back, and the soldiers began firing at all the zombies in the area as they held the doors. Meanwhile, Miss Su Jin and the others tried to get to the river. At the window, the guy saw a man who unfortunately died right in the car. The zombies spared no one. Some ended their lives by simply hanging themselves. It's better to die a human being than to have a zombie living in you. That's how the guys reasoned. It was very sudden, on the radio, someone was talking. He was asking if someone hearing him. The soldiers killed all the zombies that were in the area. They asked what the guys were doing here. The professor said that they knew a rescue plane was coming here. They looked at each other and asked, does anyone else know besides you? To which the woman replied that quite a few people might know this. One of the soldiers asked who they were. They looked at each other, and the professor said she was working for the government. The soldiers climbed down from the tower and gave their names. The man with the beard was named Robert, and the end man was named Jamal. They were from an aviation regiment. They explained that the place had previously been used as a defensive headquarters until recently, when they were attacked and their entire army turned into zombies. Robert added that their leader was Bokor. Jamal said that this Bokor controlled the dead, making them his slaves. It turned out that the zombies came from Africa, and Jamal knew a lot about them. The only reason the guys survived was that they were working in the armory at the time. They hid there for about three days. They had plenty of weapons, because this particular base was designated as the last line of defense until the plane arrived. The soldiers locked up the zombie crowd to lure Bokor in for revenge. But then the professor and the others came, and they had to shoot everyone in the area. The girl said they followed the drone, but neither Jamal nor Robert had heard of it. This was frightening news. On the radio, someone was talking about a place where all the survivors gathered. It was under the South Mano Bridge. The radio stopped working. The guys had doubts about whether to trust these people and whether to go there. The radio started talking again, and it kept repeating that all the survivors should gather in one place and that there are a lot of people there. Suddenly, through the window, the school children saw a rescue plane flying. They were sure it was the rescue plane. The military saw it too and said it was time to get out but they had a suspicion that the pilot could be the same Ocor. The plane was coming in for a landing. However, Robert heard a truck driving behind the fence, which surprised him. The truck broke through the wall of the military base and drove right onto the runway, heading toward the plane that was already coming in for a landing. Everyone was in shock. They didn't know who the driver was. The truck stopped in the middle of the lane and started opening the trailer. A pigeon flew out of the trailer followed by another and another. So he released a flock of pigeons that flew straight into the engines of the plane. It was a bird attack. They flew right into the plane and could have easily brought it down. The plane's windows shattered. The hull was scratched, and all the engines were destroyed. The plane couldn't land. It crashed and exploded. Miss Su Jin and the boys saw everything. This plane was their last hope of salvation. The engine of the plane flew straight into the cars where Ms. Su Jin and the children were. It fell in front of them and threw them backward. Everyone in the car was badly hurt. At that moment, zombies began to run into the base through the truck aisle. The military couldn't withstand Bokor's forces. Robert slowly approached the truck, firing a couple of rounds, and then told the driver to stick his head out. Jamal covered his comrades back. Robert decided to get closer walking carefully in the crosshairs. The truck driver could see him in the side mirror. The pilot did manage to land the plane, but unfortunately, he fell straight into the crowd of zombies. Unable to unhook his parachute, he ended up being overwhelmed by the horde. Jamal realized the dire situation they were in, realizing that Bokor had trapped them. Robert had only one thing on his mind, to kill Bokor.
whoever he was. Meanwhile, the car was already surrounded by zombies, and the students were in bad shape. They couldn't move. Some of them woke up while others wished they had remained unconscious. Teacher Sam was alive. A zombie was sneaking through the trunk, and Ms. Su Jin suggested they should get out of there. One of the classmates had already become sick with the zombie virus, so he threw it outside and started eating it. Ms. Su Jin tried to start the car, but a crowd of monsters had gathered around them. One of the students finally unbuckled his belt, grabbed his classmate, and climbed out of the window just in time to avoid being eaten. They started running away, leaving the others in the car. The car started, and they drove away. Su Jin didn't notice that the children were missing. So she stopped the car, but there was a zombie in front of her. She said, if we don't leave, we will die. Meanwhile, Sam took an umbrella and opened the trunk. He asked to be left alone as he was going to find and rescue the children. They promised to meet at the place someone was talking about on the radio. The children tearfully said goodbye to him. Sam was attacked by a zombie but he skillfully killed it with a shot to the head using the umbrella as his only weapon. He called the children's names, but no one responded. More and more zombies approached him. Robert was almost at the door of the truck. He climbed on top of it and jumped inside abruptly. There was a zombie in the cabin, and he shot it through. At school, Hong heated the blood in a bag in the microwave to body temperature. He put it in a syringe and injected it into a rag bag. It didn't look like much, but it was the only way to control a zombie. He called it the zombie collar. At the military base, Robert rejoiced that he was able to finish off Bokor. Everyone was shocked to hear this. Jamal decided to see if it was true. He looked in and saw that it wasn't Bokor. It turned out that Bokor had trained him by tying a bag of blood in front of him. Hong put the collar on the zombie. It immediately started biting it and in a moment it stopped, since after one bite, the thirst disappears for a while, but there is still the smell of blood in the air. He put these collars on everyone he saw. Some needed one bite, some needed several. When the thirst subsides, they begin to calm down, but that calm doesn't last long. The professor and Hungo told the soldiers about the Bokor base. The soldiers asked to be taken there. The guys in the car, the engine was completely damaged due to the wreckage of an airplane that flew right at them. At one point, the engine stopped working and caught fire. Minkyu could not calm down. He said that all of them would die anyway. Su Jin told everyone to leave the car. She had a plan. She wanted to find a new car since the old one could explode at any moment. Luckily, there were no zombies nearby, but Mink felt bad. He repeated that soon they would die anyway. He would rather die a man than a zombie. All the students began to give up and give in, saying they couldn't make it. Su Jin found a new car, which was even better than the last one because it was gas-powered. Minkyu was terribly thirsty, but Su Jin told him to wait until the shelter. He was unbearably thirsty. Suddenly, he looked at his classmate's neck. He quietly began to approach her and he ended up biting her. Her classmate noticed her, but she was covering her face with her hair, and it was hard to understand what was wrong with her. He thought she had just fallen asleep. The realization came to Mink that he was turning into a zombie. He couldn't believe that he could bite her. Meanwhile, Sam was running away from the zombies who were chasing him. It was getting dark outside. He still hadn't found the kids, and there was a whole mob chasing him. Suddenly, a car appeared in front of him, and a schoolgirl looked out of the window. It was Silgi. He quickly climbed into the car. The children were all right. The boys were glad someone had come for them. They made their way to the shelter. The guys were already there. A classmate wanted to awaken Sina, but she wasn't asleep. She had turned into a zombie. She pounced on him, and unfortunately, she bit him. Shinny bit Minka as well. They ended up with three zombies in the car. Through all the commotion, they crashed into a pole. The boys and Sam drove to the designated meeting place, but the car wasn't there. They should have been there a long time ago, but there was no one there. The soldiers rode in an armored car. 
It was amazing that soldiers could get infected with such equipment. But there is no hiding from the virus. And even if you have such equipment, you can become a zombie. On the roof of the car, Robert practiced shooting at passing zombies. Hyun Ho marveled at the equipment the U.S. Army soldiers had. Robert appreciated the boy's knowledge and gave him a gun to shoot. It was the first time he had ever held a real machine gun in his hands. Robert taught the boy how to shoot properly. The boy took aim, pointed the machine gun at the zombie, and fired. But he missed and hit it near the head. He didn't hit because of the recoil of the machine gun. He tried to shoot again. The second time, he hit precisely in the head. The soldier praised him and gave him the machine gun, telling him to protect his family. But the stranger's aunt and the boy were strangers to Hyun Ho, which Robert didn't know. Hyun Ho was very happy that he now had a machine gun. Suddenly, the Hummer stopped. In the car, Sinny almost bit Su Jin, but she dodged at the last moment. The girls began to leave the car. They began to run away. At school, the girls were discussing the teacher, but their conversation was interrupted by the attendant on duty, who repeated to them to close all the windows and turn off the lights. The girls did as instructed. The duty officer went further down the corridor and in the distance. He saw two guys. He ordered them to report the situation, but they didn't want to do it. Then he showed them his arm bandage, reminding them that he was in charge because he was appointed by his teacher. The guys opened the door behind them, and it turned out to be a storage room. They were discussing how Sam, the teacher, was able to bring in so much food by himself, and they suspected that someone else was helping him. It was obvious that the teacher couldn't have brought everything alone. The duty officer reported everything to the teacher, as he was supposed to do. He had a hunch that someone was on the first floor, so he decided to go down again. Meanwhile, Hong was in the infirmary, looking for drugs that could cure zombies, but found nothing. As he left the room and walked down the corridor, he saw a jar of pills. However, behind him, there was a teacher who was ready for battle. Luckily, the teacher shot through Hoon's backpack. And for the second time, Hoon escaped death because the teacher once again missed him. Hoon ran into the office and hid behind the desk. The teacher ordered him to come out, but he sat quietly at the desk. The teacher asked Hoon if he was a living man. The military had already arrived at Bokor's lair. They got off the Humvee and began to explore it. They found a bunch of containers. Their plan was simple. If they saw a zombie, they would shoot immediately. The soldiers split up. Huango was left on guard with a machine gun while the professor and Ray stayed in the car. The soldiers put on their thermal gear and started going through the containers. As soon as Robert entered one of the containers, he spotted a zombie and quickly finished it off. It turned out that these containers were interconnected like a labyrinth. On the wall of one container, Robert saw a map with markings on it. Outside, the professor noticed a strange van and decided to see what was inside. Hyun Ho promised to cover for her while Ray stayed in the car. The schoolboy told Ray not to go anywhere. When the girl climbed inside the van, she was surprised to find various books and posters about car engines. There was also a table at the end of the container with a computer and the drone they had been watched from. The monitors displayed camera feeds showing the entire area within the containers. The girl removed the memory card from the drone and inserted it into the laptop. Ray saw a zombie that looked like his mother through the window so he thought it was her and ran out of the car. When Hun Ho saw this, he ran to him. At the last moment, the boy realized it wasn't his mother, but it was too late. The zombie bit the boy. Only after the boy remembered that he had a machine gun in his hands did he shoot the zombie woman. Bokor had been watching them all along, no matter where they went. Jamal stopped by a painting and used the flashlight from his machine gun to examine it. He noticed someone standing behind him. When he turned around, he saw Bokor. He couldn't believe his eyes and knelt down, putting down his weapon. Back at school, a dialogue took place between the teacher and Hong. Hoon told him that he was not a zombie, but a human being, unable to reveal himself, to prove that he was telling the truth. The teacher asked him to stand up, promising to believe him if he did. Hong, 
being clever, extended a dummy to appear as if he was standing, and then the teacher blew off his head. The teacher was amazed that the zombies could talk. From the cameras in the van, the professor saw everything going on. She didn't understand why Jamal was doing this. Jamal admired Bokor, even when he faced him defenselessly. The zombie would not bite him. Bokor ordered the soldier to get up and follow him. The professor screamed at the monitors for Jamal to destroy Bokor. Meanwhile, Robert came to some kind of cage. He turned on the light and saw two zombies fighting in it. They were on chains and tugging at each other. The professor was watching these events too. She thought it was some kind of training, and suddenly she remembered how Bokor used to make those two guys fight in front of them. Looking closely at the zombie fighters, Robert recognized one of them as his comrade. He was a champion boxer. Watching the zombies, the soldier realized that they could squat and dodge, and the dead used real boxing techniques. The girl guessed what Bokor wanted to do. The zombie was trying to identify the level of physical ability of zombies while they were still alive. The dead man separately selected the physically superior zombies. Robert looked closely and saw that behind the wrestling cage was another one, where many ready zombies were standing. After a while, Bokor led the soldier into a room where people were lying on bunks and donating blood into bags. People welcomed Bokor and Jamal. The soldier went to look for an empty seat. Suddenly, a doctor came out and pointed Jamal to an empty seat. The doctor began to explain why the man was here. He said that Bokor had brought him because the soldier had sinned a great deal, and so Jamal would become a sacrificial lamb. The doctor wiped the place for the needle and then injected Jamal with the syringe, where his blood was already pouring out. At the same time, at school, our hero was taking the pulse of his infected classmate. The dead man's pulse was between 6 and 13. Very slow. An ordinary person would never be able to live under such conditions. Hoon had the same pulse. Next, he checked for a pupil response to light. Fortunately, the study was successful. The zombies also reacted to sound. When the dead used the zombie collar, they responded to different kinds of stimulation. Suddenly, our hero called out to his infected classmate. And a few seconds later, the zombie turned toward Hoon. The boy thought it was just a coincidence. And then he began to think of a way to make Juzung remember him. Suddenly, Hong recalls how the teachers were constantly making remarks to Jisung about how he was constantly talking and interfering. Our hero said the same thing as the teacher and the infected classmate turned around and made an innocent face. This reaction surprised our hero, and he realized that his classmate had not yet completely lost his memory. Meanwhile, near Bokor's hideout, an infected ray stood up and attacked Yunho. The schoolboy tried with all his might to throw the boy away. At the same moment, the professor jumped out of the trailer and told Hyun Ho that she had figured out Bokor's schemes. It turned out that the dead man had let them go on purpose to carry out his plan. Hyun Ho was fighting with the bitten boy at the time, and when he called the professor for help, Ray immediately flipped on her and bit the girl on the neck. After the bite, the professor threw Ray off. Hun Ho picked up the machine gun and ordered the boy to stop. He didn't want to destroy the little guy until last, and when Ray got up and pounced on the boy, he immediately fired and eliminated the zombie. After destroying the boy, the guy looked at the professor. The girl was trying to convey information to Hai Yoon Ho from her last effort. After telling her everything, she collapsed and lost consciousness. Luckily, Hai Yoon Ho understood what the professor was talking about. He wiped away her tears and ran to the car. Meanwhile, near the cage where the zombies were beating, Robert watched the zombies ponder the situation. Suddenly, at his side, the soldier heard a noise. The man turned sharply and Bokor appeared in front of him. The soldier immediately pointed his gun and held the dead man in his sights. Robert wanted to provoke the monster, and to do so, he shot him in the shoulder. The bullet grazed him, but Bokor didn't even move. In the special room, Jamal was getting ready to give blood when suddenly he heard a shot. The man guessed it was Robert and immediately ran to him. Robert, meanwhile, already wanted to finish off the monster. 
He said he was ready to listen to his last words. Bokor ordered the soldier to shoot him. Just as Robert almost pulled the trigger, suddenly someone put a machine gun to his head. It was Jamal, and he told Robert to put the gun down. The comrade thought to the last that he was not going to shoot him. His partner said that if Robert put the gun down, he would let him go. But that didn't happen. The soldier thought Jamal had succumbed to voodoo power or was under the influence of something. Jamal tried to explain to Robert that Bokor was good and the one who would save the world. But the soldier refused to believe it. So Jamal pulled the trigger, destroying his friend. Outside, Hyun Ho got into the car and didn't know what to do. The professor had already turned into a zombie, so he decided not to wait for anyone and leave quickly. But it was the schoolboy's first time behind the wheel. He rammed everything until he could get away. It was dawn. Under one bridge, the car in which Sam, the teacher, had left with the schoolchildren, was parked. They were all asleep until they were disturbed by a man in overalls. He approached the car, and after examining it, he knocked on the window. After a while, the boys woke up. The guy asked, or they came here because of a radio message, and asked them to follow along. At school, our hero wrote different words on the blackboard. But before doing so, Hong put infected classmates behind their desks and put collars on them. The hero chose words from his friends' memories to teach them how to talk. If the dead people get their memories back soon, they will surely get their sanity back as well. Even last night, Master Huang was examining the remaining supplies. He went to the cupboard and saw that our hero had taken something from there. This angered the teacher, and he promised that he would get rid of him, and the school would be safe. In the same room, the teacher took a gas mask and a hazmat suit. In the morning, when Huang returned, he and some of the children would throw food and water supplies out the window. Some of the students did not like this at all. The teacher told the children that there was something on the first floor that he destroyed. The teacher said that this something brought supplies to throw them off. Huang explained to the boys to act very carefully in all situations and not accept gifts from strangers. Huang went in search of resources, and the man on duty wanted to go with him on the search. The teacher threw the guy a gas mask and a suit and then ordered him to put them on. Huang said they'd be back in a couple of hours, and he warned the guys not to let anyone come in here without asking. On the first floor, our hero kept wondering how to get these creatures to talk. Hong walked up to his classmate and saw him trying to read his name. To keep the zombies in check, our hero made them a special collar. A new, warm blood must be injected into it every two, three hours. Their tranquility is the same as that of a smoker who received the right dose of substances. Each of these zombies was different. Jizung had a strong thirst. Jivan, the least thirsty, could be very patient and plodding for three hours straight. Young Seung liked to play basketball with paper, and he tried to throw balls of paper into the trash. Ju Young concentrated well, during which time she learned to read and write. The rest of the zombies did what they wanted to do when they were human. Some danced and some drew. Suddenly, someone touched our hero on the back. It was Yuna. When the boy turned around, he saw that the girl was smiling. She was the only one who showed emotion well. She was also the first one to smile at Hunt. But unfortunately, her speaking skills were lagging behind the others, and the hero promised to fix that. The teacher and the schoolboy went out into the city. The boy walked between the crowds of zombies, surprised that the dead did not even attack them. It was all thanks to their protective clothing. When the guys were in it, it was impossible to smell them, so you could assume that the zombies around them were blind. The teacher said that the guns might have been stored at the police station, and that was where they were headed. But on the way, they came across a gun store, where the weapons must have been kept in good condition. The explorers went into the store and saw the safe. The teacher immediately knew that the best stored weapons would be hidden there. He opened the safe, and luckily there were guns in it. From there, the teacher got himself a good shotgun, and he gave the young man what was left in the safe. The schoolboy had never fired a shotgun, so Huang had to teach him how to use it. He warned me right away 
that it would be hard to get in with protective clothing on. Huang gave him a shooting lesson, and the student destroyed the first zombie. But suddenly, someone attacked them from behind. It was the owner of the gun store. The dead man had a protective helmet on his head and a full set of armor. Destroying him would not be very easy. Meanwhile, Hyun Ho somehow made it to the school. Our hero saw someone enter the school grounds. After a closer look, he recognized his classmate. As Miss Su Jin and the girl next to her were sleeping in the car, a tiger suddenly ran out at their car. It climbed on the hood and began growling. The girls were immediately frightened by it and began to scream with fear. Suddenly, a zombie walked up to the car. The tiger saw this and immediately mauled the dead man. The schoolgirl calmed down and guessed that the animal had escaped from the zoo. Suddenly, Miss, Su Jin began to freak out and beat the steering wheel with her hands. Unfortunately, the woman was desperate. She cried and said that they had no more hope or future. After all, the rescue plane had crashed, and a tiger was roaming the streets of the city. No army or police could have helped or stopped it. Out of fear, Miss Su Jin started talking nonsense. The girl sitting next to her told her not to give up hope, because now they were all alive. The woman calmed down and then asked if they should have gone to the shelter they had been told about on the radio. The schoolgirl said it could be dangerous there and recommended they return to school, because there was a teacher they could trust. Hyun Ho looked around and got out of the car. His classmates immediately noticed him and remembered how he had tried to escape with the bullies to save his life. The classmates were clearly unhappy with the boy's return. Hyun Ho asked the boys to open the entrance to the second floor for him, but they said they couldn't because the teacher had told them not to let anyone in until he returned. Suddenly, an infected classmate ran out of the school onto Hyun Ho. The boy jumped into the car at the last moment, and the zombie slammed his face against the door. At the same moment, the teacher and the schoolboy tried to crush the zombie in armor. Huang shot straight at the dead man's head, but unfortunately it was all in vain, because he had a very strong helmet. The guy also tried to destroy the dead man. He shot him in the stomach, but the zombie was saved by his body armor, and he did not get a scratch. The shopkeeper attacked every zombie, and because of this, the teacher thought he was a smart zombie too. The dead man came close to the schoolboy, but he was out of ammunition and needed to reload. The kid didn't have time to do that and was hit with all his might by the big guy. The teacher was furious and didn't understand what was going on. In Bokor's bunker, Jamal went back to his room. There he was, already greeted by patients who clapped for him. The men praised the soldier for what he had done. Suddenly, a doctor came out of the room and asked what happened here. People said that Jamal destroyed his comrade, who wanted to get in their way. The doctor was shocked, and the people in the ward respected the soldier. Suddenly, the men asked what he had done to become an apostle, and the doctor told him that he, too, had done something unusual. At the hospital, the man took some virus, infected blood, and used it for some samples. He said that there were few side effects. The infected man did not want to spread the virus, but simply gnawed and attacked everything he saw. The doctor called this effect rage. The teacher saw that the zombie had hit his student and immediately shot the dead man in the knee, and then in the arm. The men in the arm, the monster could not hold on and simply fell to the ground, after which Huang used his foot to remove the zombie's helmet and then destroyed it. At the same time, a guy in a hazmat suit led the guys into the bunker. The boys entered the bunker, and in front of them, the group saw a spacious auxiliary where they were met by the other survivors. They got acquainted, and the man who had brought them here gave them their clothes and suggested that the boys take a shower. Sam, the teacher, was surprised to find that there were showers in the room. Sung Min sincerely believed that these guys were good people. The man said they would give the boys some food after their bath. Sam thanked them, and they went into the shower. After destroying the shopkeeper, Huang helped the student stand up and told him to always check his gun for ammunition. When the boy stood up, the teacher saw that the zombie had damaged his protective suit and was bleeding from his eye. The other zombies started to smell her, and when they smell blood, 
they immediately started running at the guy. The boys ran from their seats and ran for their lives. As they ran past the cracked fence, a crowd of zombies suddenly collapsed on the guys, and they were pinned down. The dead men immediately ran straight at the men. The teacher and the schoolboy couldn't move, and the boy begged the teacher to help him. Huang heard him and began to destroy the zombies that were approaching him. One by one, he destroyed the dead that approached the boy. The zombies kept coming and coming. The teacher was running out of ammunition, and when he was distracted to reload, he heard a boy screaming in the distance. The teacher quickly reloaded his weapon and saved the student at the last moment. When Huang was once again taking out ammunition to reload, he accidentally dropped a stack of ammunition, and the zombies still ate the student in front of the teacher. When the zombie retreated, Hyun Ho climbed out of the car, but with a machine gun. He showed it to the other students who were sitting on the second floor. The boy said he had many more weapons. His classmates stared at him, but even with that equipment, they wouldn't let Hyun Ho in because the teacher hadn't returned yet. The guy decided to show off his skills when an infected student ran at him. Hai Yoon Ho immediately destroyed him. Some kids wanted to open the door for him, but still most were against the idea. Suddenly, Hyun Ho saw someone on the first floor. The boy aimed his rifle scope at the dead man and recognized him as his classmate. Hyun Ho could not destroy him. The teacher was lying under a fence with zombies all around him. He decided it was better to wait for someone to come to his aid. Suddenly, Huang saw his student already turned into a zombie. His constant noises quickly bored the teacher, and he decided to be patient. Hyun Ho went back to the car. About two hours had passed, but the teacher was still gone. He didn't know how much longer he would have to wait. Our hero was watching Han In Ho. He saw that the boy had his phone with him and decided that he needed to talk to his classmate. But the fact that Hoon Ho was a zombie must remain a secret. A couple of minutes later, a message arrived on Han Hoon Ho's phone. The boy was surprised at first and did not understand how this could happen. But then he picked up the phone and saw what Hun had written to him. It made him sweat. Hyun Ho was very happy that his friend was alive, but suddenly he remembered the situation when he was riding with hooligans on a motorcycle, where he almost hit our hero. The guy asked our hero, or he wasn't a zombie. Hoon said he was not a zombie because zombies could not write a message. The guys corresponded for a long time and asked each other what happened to them. When Sam, the teacher, and his students had washed up, the man who had brought them to the shelter suggested they go get something to eat. On the way, he asked, or did the boys come because of a message on the radio? It turned out that the signal was announced by the man. He said that he actually doubted anyone would hear the message, but still the guys were here. Suddenly, Sam asked if a girl had come to see them. He meant Miss Su Jin, and the guy said he hadn't seen anyone. Sam said they all heard the message together, but then split up and agreed to meet here. The guy reassured him and said she would be here soon. As they talked, they had already reached the dining room. The man opened the doors and a long table with many different dishes appeared in front of the children. The cook invited everyone to the table. The teacher and the students were thrilled, and they ate everything they saw on the table. The cook told the kids not to put so much food in their mouths. At one point, Sam began to suspect something. He had a feeling that something was wrong. After dinner, toward nightfall, the teacher wanted to leave the bunker, but suddenly the man stopped him and told him to stay here because the bunker had been built so that he would not be noticed. Then, the guy said that he had already made the bed for him. Sam was grateful for the care they showed. And suddenly, the boy asked the teacher one question. He asked how Sam behaved in different situations, emotionally or rationally. The teacher said he wanted to be rational, but most of the time, he acted emotionally and spontaneously. And when Sam talked about Huang, he got a little sad because he was better than him. After a short conversation, Sam went to bed after all. The children, meanwhile, were already trying to sleep in their rooms. None of them were asleep. The girl was not comfortable sleeping on the mattresses. She wanted to lie down on the blanket. Suddenly, she told Sung Min to take care of her, and the boy agreed. And then, for saving the girl, she wanted to hug him. 
Sung Min went to bed with his classmate in his arms. A strange man was watching all this through the mirror. Hyun Ho told everything to our hero until late at night. When Hong heard about the intelligent zombie Bokor, Hyun Ho was puzzled by the hero's calm reaction. Hong has never seen Bokor, but it is a fact that zombies like him exist. Hong had heard the same thing yesterday from the teacher in the teacher's lounge, so he was not surprised again. As the conversation continued, Hyun Ho almost guessed that our hero was a zombie. Hun really liked Hyun Ho's story, where he told about a boy named Ray. He was in an enclosed space with zombies for several days, and during that time, the boy was not even attacked. Hyun Ho said it was all because of Ray's mother's love. But our hero thought there had to be more to it. He pondered a way to tame the zombies without a special collar. Suddenly, a classmate wrote that he really wanted to go back to his school days, where life was familiar. Hong couldn't answer that. Suddenly, someone knocked on the classroom where our hero was sitting. Hong was horrified and didn't understand who it could be. A moment later, the doors opened and Hai Un Ho entered the classroom. Hoon immediately told the guy not to come in here. He tried to stop him, but it was already in vain. Hyun Ho said it was okay. The guy was just like Hoon. He was bitten by little Ray in a fight. Because the virus was spreading slowly, Hyun Ho tried to bring weapons and supplies to the school. But on the way, there he fainted and became weak several times. When Hyun Ho corresponded with Hong, he already had some hope. Turns out, the guy knew all along that our hero was a dead man. After all, how would he have survived being on the first floor? Hong showed his students to a friend, and the infected classmates greeted Hyun Ho. The guy was surprised by all this. Then, our hero said that they had a new student in their class. The zombies greeted him again. And after these words, Hai and Ho fell down and with the last of his strength told Hong to save the professor he spoke of earlier. And after a second, Han Yeon Ho finally turned into a zombie. Teacher Sam spent half the night near the front doors of the bunker. Suddenly, the man who had recently rescued them came to him and he called Sam to go get something to eat. The guys went down and sat down at the table. Once again, there was a whole clearing and a mountain of very tasty food. It turned out that the survivors did this all the time in the bunker, because they had a lot of supplies and plus they had a former hotel chef in their squad. The man talked about all the people who were here. He himself was a barber. Suddenly, the cook said they conferred and said the guys couldn't stay long. They had packed three days' worth of food, clothes, and bedding in their backpacks beforehand. Sam and the children were saddened to hear the news. The teacher thanked them for their concern, and he and the children were about to leave. But suddenly, the cook said that not everyone could leave. The man said that only Sung Min and Sam would leave the bunker, and that Selji would stay with them. The teacher couldn't believe what he was hearing. Teacher Huang lay under the wall until morning. When he heard a car coming, he shouted and waved his hands to be noticed. Fortunately, it was Ms. Su Jin's car. The schoolgirl saw someone at the window asking for help, and she looked closely and recognized the victim as her teacher. She told Ms. Su Jin, and she stopped the car. But the girl did not particularly want to help the teacher, because for her, he was a strange man, and she did not feel comfortable around him. The schoolgirl still persuaded the woman to help, and they looked around and got out of the car. The girls ran up to the pinned down teacher. Miss Su Jin tried to lift the fence with her own strength, but nothing worked, and even with joint efforts, they could not free the man. Miss Su Jin turned around and saw one zombie in the distance. The teacher called the schoolgirl and told her to take the ammunition that was near him and load it into the shotgun to destroy the monster. The girl said she didn't know how to do that, so Hong asked her to help him load the shotgun. As Miss Su Jin was pushing back the pieces of the fence, she saw a weapon lying near the infected boy. The girl didn't hesitate to run up to him and get it. In the meantime, the zombie that stood in the distance was already running right at the schoolgirl. The teacher loaded the shotgun and threw it to the schoolgirl and ordered her to shoot the dead man. The girl was terribly afraid to do so and when the zombie almost bit her, she pulled the trigger at the last moment 
and hit the dead man in the stomach and flew back from the recoil of the shotgun. But she didn't have time to recover because she hit the zombie in the stomach instead of the head, and it didn't destroy it. The dead man jumped to his feet and attacked the girl. At the last moment, Ms. Su Jin managed to free the teacher, and he apprehended the zombie. Taking the shotgun from the student, he destroyed the zombie with the first shot. The boys fought off a wave of zombies, and then they decided what to do. Huang thanked Ms. Su Jin for the rescue and told everyone to go back to school. This news made the schoolgirl happy, but not Miss Sujin. The woman said that now their paths were parted. She took her gun with her as a gift for her help and left. Sam continued to argue with one of the survivors. The man said that everyone in their bunker was there, except the girls. After saying that, he grabbed Solji's arm and dragged her toward him. Sung Min couldn't just watch this. He grabbed the girl's other arm and began to take her back. The cook didn't like this venture. He kicked the guy with all his might, and he flew backwards. The man was furious. He didn't understand why they resisted when they had done so much to them. Sam was starting to get angry, too, and attacked the carpenter who was holding Silgai. The teacher twisted his arm, and before anyone could see, he pulled a crescent wrench from his pocket. The teacher took the gun and returned the girl and stood in front of the children to protect them. Sam said the men were only touched by the student over his dead body. The cook immediately began insulting Sam for his profession, saying he didn't understand how people could choose such a job. Sam didn't answer that. He only warned that if anyone ever came near his students, he would bash anyone's head in. And it wasn't nothing. The cook came up to Sam to talk to him, and the teacher immediately hit the cook over the head with the wrench. So much so that he fell to the floor. This was another warning from the teacher. In his hiding place, Bokor took out a memory card with drone footage and plugged it into his laptop. The monster turned on the recording, and there he watched as Junho drove up to the school, much to the zombie's delight, and even more to his delight that there were people in the school. The other boys were already shaking with fear. Sam reassured the kids and told them to trust him. The barber also tried to talk to the teacher, he said introducing Sam that his students had been bitten by a zombie. And then he asked if he would be sure he could protect them in such a situation. Sam wondered. Another man came into their conversation and said that if the guys left here, they wouldn't make it. The barber went on and said that the best way to survive was to stay here. And then he pointed his finger at Silgi and said that she wanted to stay here herself. The girl was scared and unsure of herself. Suddenly, Sung Min said that everything he said might be true. He didn't know if they would have a chance, even briefly, to have a hearty meal or sleep in the warmth. For the first time since the apocalypse began, the boy lived like a normal person. All of his friends have become zombies, and if they leave, they will never enjoy it again. Teacher Sam didn't understand what Sung Min was saying. He said it was all wrong but those men further insisted that the boys give them the girl. This made Sam very angry. He realized that these scoundrels were interested in what they said about their friend because Silgi was the girl. After that, the survivors decided to take Silgi by force. The three of them attacked Sam, and the teacher was the winner in the end. At the school, there were people on duty on the roof. The girl watched through binoculars. All around were abandoned cars and ruined houses. They were worried about the teacher and their friend. But suddenly, on the horizon, the girl saw a car driving ahead. She got a closer look at it, and it turned out to be a teacher. When the boys got a closer look at the car, they saw that it was carrying supplies for them. But there was a truck behind them. At the last moment, the teacher noticed it and managed to pull away. The truck overtook them and the man saw the back of the truck filled with zombies. A few seconds later, the truck crashed into the school building, and its body smashed the windows of their school bunker on the second floor. The zombies started pouring into the school in rivers. A few minutes later, most of the dead were in the building. Half of the students turned into zombies, while the rest tried to escape. The zombies smelled them and chased after the students. They decided to run to the first floor since there was no other choice.
Teacher Huang, meanwhile, turned around and left the crash site. He said he could not cope with so many zombies. The girl tried until the last minute to convince the teacher to turn around and help the guys. But he only said that he was surviving, not fighting zombies. The student held the doors so the zombies couldn't get through. His strength was running out, and as the others ran downstairs, they saw a crowd of zombies in front of them. And then they stopped. They thought they were finished. But luckily, it was our hero. He told them to disperse, and his army took out their machine guns. And then the hero ordered them to aim. The zombies pointed their cannons at the enemies, and immediately started shooting at them. After a few seconds, the enemies were wiped out. But they weren't all zombies. The rest of the dead kept running into the school. Unfortunately, our hero didn't have time to train his infected classmates to recharge. So Hong quickly assessed the situation and directed people to the classroom on the first floor. The hero's next task was to get all the extraneous zombies out of the school. He took a bag of warm blood and pre-punctured it. Hong made a path and led the rest of the dead with him. The hero successfully left the building with the rest of the zombies and to get them to run even farther away. He threw the bag somewhere on the street. Suddenly, the guy looked at the truck driver. He saw someone just like him, training and attracting zombies. Suddenly, behind him, Hong heard strange sounds. The hero turned around and saw a large and pumped up zombie. Hong thought that the zombie had no reason to attack him, but he was deeply mistaken. The monster with the fierce eyes ran straight at Hong, who did nothing because he thought the giant would not hit him. The monster walked up to Hoon and grabbed him by the throat, then pressed him to the ground and started strangling him as hard as he could. The hero didn't understand what was happening. In class, the rescued students were discussing the zombie rescuer. They guessed it was Hong. But then some even cried from the situation and from not knowing what to do. Their conversations were overheard by Ji Sung as he slowly approached the classroom. Our hero didn't want to give up in any way. He took the monster's hand and easily took it from his neck. The monster saw this and simply hit Hoon on the head so that he flew away several meters. The giant began his attack again. He ran like a bull straight at Hoon. Our hero was clever. He waited for the right moment and rolled aside at the last second. Because of this, the monster flew at full speed into the doors of the van. Hoon thought it was over and relaxed and went back to school to change the collars of his infected classmates. But suddenly, the giant grabbed Hoon by the leg and knocked him over. And then he slammed Hoon against the car doors. Ji Sung went crazy. He heard the smell of people, and he wanted to get to the guys in the classroom very badly. He started breaking the glass. The students were terrified. All they could do was watch. Our hero was about to lose consciousness and realized that he needed to change the collars of the infected. Because if he does not have time, then everyone in the class will be destroyed. When the bully stopped beating the truck driver, he saw, out of the corner of his eye, the children in the classroom. Without thinking, he ran through the window of the classroom. A big zombie landed on the desks and chairs. All the students were terrified of what was happening. The zombie started screaming and throwing everything he could get his hands on. Jisung almost broke through the window. A small hole had already appeared between the cracks. Hyunho didn't take long to pick up a machine gun and pushing Jisung away. He first knocked on the cracked window to attract the monster's attention, and then put the muzzle of the machine gun into that little hole. The monster ran right through that window, and without worrying, Junho pulled the trigger and successfully eliminated the annoying dead man. Yuna reacted quickly and covered the hole with her head, so she couldn't hear the smell of people. Our hero woke up and came to his senses. He had no more time for inaction. Hong jumped through the broken zombie window and said before he climbed in that he wasn't going to hurt anyone. The classmates didn't really believe him, so they retreated to the other end of the classroom. Hong walked past the people and out of the office. He saw that Hyun Ho took the shot and Yuna covered the gap with her head. And so that no one would be in danger, the guy added one last packet of warm blood to the collars of his infected friends. Hoon returned to the classroom and said that the boys should have gone back to the second floor.
because it was much safer there. The hero promised that he would give them a safe escort. The classmates trusted him and went to the second floor. The boys were very afraid, but they made it safely to the shelter. Before entering, Wan Choi thought they were like caged animals. But Hoon said that all is well, and they are no longer in danger. Even in spite of all the good deeds our hero did, the surviving classmates never wanted to trust him. All because Hong was a zombie. Miss Su Jin was jumping over chasms between houses and running away from zombies. When she broke away and suddenly wanted to run further, suddenly she heard the sound of cars. She looked down and saw an ordinary car and a military apes from below. A man in a racing suit got out of the car and started waving his arms at the military. The tank stopped and the man in the armor got out. The racer took off his helmet and said he had an infected passenger in the car. The military officer heard this and immediately prepared to shoot. When the man turned his head to look at his friend in the car, the soldier saw that the guy had blood on his neck. The soldier holding the man at gunpoint asked where the man was bleeding from. The guy said it was just a splash and he was not infected. The soldier demanded confirmation. He asked the man to sing the national anthem. The guy couldn't do it. He was destroyed before he even started. The military had its own rules and regulations, which stated that if soldiers saw someone suspicious, they must immediately destroy him. The guys talked for a little while longer and drove on. Meanwhile, in the bunker, Sam's arms were getting tired of holding the rather heavy instrument. The men barricaded the exit so that none of the guys could get out. But even if they managed to escape, the zombies will certainly not let them rest. Neither the teacher nor the children knew what to do. Suddenly, the barber suggested that Sam talk, saying that the children were just strangers to him. Sam didn't want to listen to the rascal's words, because if they left, they would end up becoming zombies. And in that moment, the children would look at the teacher with hatred because he couldn't keep them safe. The barber assured me that Sam should not do this, for he, too, was a man who needed help. One of the door guards, just delirious, went out into the street, which was crowded with zombies. As soon as he got out, the zombie immediately attacked him. A teacher and his student were driving along the road when suddenly a military armored vehicle blocked their path. The soldier got out of the tank and ordered them to stop. He then told the boys to prove that they were human beings. Huang got out and said he was a teacher, and his student was next to him. They left when the school was attacked by dead people. Next, the soldiers asked or did they have weapons. And in the course of the conversation, one of the soldiers recognized the teacher. It turned out that Huang was an ex-military man who had completed his service back in 1997. Huang confirmed his identity and said he was the one they thought he was. The old friends talked some more and Huang, and the schoolgirl wanted to get into the tank with the military. But as soon as the teacher wanted to open the door, a zombie attacked him. The military reacted quickly and destroyed the pesky monsters. Then, after making sure that the teacher and the girl were not infected, the military let them into their tank. Sungman was already desperate. He told the teacher that if this continued, they would be of no use. After that sentence, the boy suggested that Sam surrender. Sulji was thinking the same thing. The teacher was telling the kids not to be silly, because they had already gone far enough. Sungmin said it was better to stay these men than to go out on the street. Silgi was crying and didn't know what to do. Suddenly, their conversation was interrupted by a sudden sound. It turned out that their bunker had been attacked by zombies because some man had opened the front doors. The one who opened the doors stood outside, devoured by zombies and not even writhing in pain. He consciously wanted to end his life and take the lives of those in hiding. The men tried to stop the crowd of the dead with the doors, but they did not calculate that zombies are many times stronger than humans. They were simply thrown to the side, and the monsters entered the room unharmed. Some of the guys were wiped out by zombies, and some managed to escape by going into another room. The barber and the teacher and the children did not have time to enter the room. The man begged for Sam to save him, but the teacher wasn't going to do it. When the barber was destroyed, Sam used him as a shield. With one hand, Sam used the man's body to shield himself from the monsters. And with the other hand, he destroyed them with the key. 
Master Sam destroyed the vile zombies one by one. But still, the numbers took over, in spite of the guy's strength. At the same time, Bokor pulled out the drone footage again. He inserted the memory card into the laptop, and on the monitors, he saw something that made him very angry. At first, his whole plan went like clockwork. First, Bokor saw most of his zombies simply wiped out with machine guns. And then, he saw our hero drive away the pesky dead with a blood bag. Our hero went in search of new blood. He left Hyun Ho in charge to watch over the rest of the zombies. Hong could not rely on the collar all the time. He had to find the professor Hai Yoon Ho had talked about and find another way out. Hoon's march from the top floor of the school was watched by the rescued students. The blonde guy said that Hong saved them only to make them food for zombies. Meanwhile, in the military tank, the soldiers had a lot to talk about with their former commander. Huang took a cigarette and tasted it for the first time in a long time, because it was forbidden in school. Huang wondered how well the colonel remembered all his subordinates. The man said it was because he and his subordinates had been through joys and sorrows. It was only natural for him to remember the subordinates with whom he had fought together. The colonel told how in the past Huang was an excellent shot, was good at sports, and even thanks to him, the colonel's unit won an award. The teacher listened and laughed. Then the colonel told an interesting story about a teacher. He had once broken through a detachment of communist guerrillas, and Huang was waiting in ambush. And as soon as he was spotted, the two men were immediately destroyed a moment later. The boys sat talking and reminiscing about the old days until it came to military regulations. The soldiers reported that they could have easily destroyed the guys if they hadn't been able to change their minds. After that, the colonel demanded that Huang give him his weapons, if the teacher understood them. Our hero was walking around the city and felt very strange. He felt like a fluffy thing. Hong thought it was a side effect of that huge zombie throwing himself at him. Suddenly, passing by the houses, Hong saw two people running away from the zombies. He thought for a long time whether to help them or not. But he had a kind soul and rushed to help the people. The hero saw that the survivors ran into the building and at the last moment closed the doors behind them, the zombies trying to get to them. Hoon went to the door and destroyed those two dead men. Suddenly, the doors opened and our hero was miraculously not destroyed. The men tried to destroy Hoon with a bat, but without hitting his head, they hit his blindfold. Our hero realized that he was in a terrible situation and his instincts were about to kick in. He covered his nose with his palm and tried not to breathe. But after taking just a small breath, he smelled people and the beast awoke in him. At the same moment, Sam was fighting back the dead in the bunker, the zombies almost biting the children. But the teacher saved them in time every time. But unfortunately, the number of zombies exceeded Sam's power. All he had for protection was a crescent wrench. Until the very end, the teacher struggled, and suddenly he heard gunshots. Someone wiped out the zombies one by one until he had eliminated them all. That someone was in a red racing suit. The savior took off his helmet and underneath was Ms. Su Jin. The girl did not stop attacking Hong. She kept swinging the bat more and more in front of our hero's face. Fortunately, Hong was full of unknown strength. He jumped to his feet and along the walls of the neighboring houses he ran away from her. The guy ran a decent distance away and ended up next to the girl's two companions. They were hiding in a car at the time. The guy screamed and a uniformed soldier climbed out of the car, took aim at the hero and started shooting at him. Hong dodged every bullet and thanks to his ability, he was able to escape. When the car was almost gone, the comrades realized that they had forgotten the girl. She ran right after the car, when suddenly, from the darkness, she was attacked by Hong. The boy grabbed her and wanted to bite her, but he restrained himself. All his instincts told him to destroy Young Chu. The soldier saw this and aimed his gun at the girl. He waited for Hong to bite the girl so that he could destroy her. Our hero did not give up. He tolerated to the end, 
But still at one point, he did not hold back and bit Young Chu. But not by the neck, but by the jacket. The guy in uniform thought the girl was already infected. He immediately started shooting at them to eliminate them. Our hero reacted in the moment and dragged the girl with him behind the car. The soldier's comrade told him not to waste bullets on them. After these words, the military went away. Young Chu still thought she was in danger. The girl tried again and again to destroy Hoon, but all her attempts were unsuccessful. Our hero tried to talk to the woman. Hong said he wasn't dangerous. After these words, Young Chu started to ask the guy questions. He quickly answered them, and the girl calmed down. When Hong asked Young Chu if she had anything to cover her nose with, a zombie attacked her from the side. The girl didn't have time to react, and at the last moment, she was saved by Hong, who told her to take shelter in a nearby house. While taking shelter in the house, she saw with her own eyes how Hoon destroyed the zombies. Then, he approached her, and the girl took off her respirator and asked if he was okay with it. Miss Su Jin heard someone running from the side. It was a zombie. She killed the dead man with an accurate shotgun blast and to prevent a similar situation from happening again. The girl closed the passage. Sam was pleasantly surprised that Su Jin came to them. He asked how she got here. As it turned out, the girl realized that there was something wrong with the place where they were supposed to meet. After all, Miss Su Jin had never heard of a bunker in Yuido before. Teacher Sam sincerely thanked the woman for the rescue, but she said it was too early because she needed to make sure or they were safe. The girl asked, or were there survivors here besides the teacher and the children? Sam said there were several other people hiding behind the door. The teacher went to the door where the men were hiding and started pounding on them with all his might and telling them to come out. In the room, they decided that they would not open it because there is food, water, and all the basic necessities. As Sam assessed the situation, he realized they were trapped. The guys couldn't get in or out. Miss Su Jin went through the rooms and in one of them, she found protective suits. One of the fellow locked men went to check if there was anyone at the emergency exit. He came back in a hurry because he said that there were a lot of monsters near the door. And when he ran, he broke the lock. And unfortunately, the zombies broke into the guy's hideout in droves. The men opened the main doors in a hurry, and as they ran out, they saw men with guns and suits. They begged for at least one of them to help them, but it was in vain. Sam told Ms. Sujin not to help the poor people. The men didn't have time to do anything and were eaten alive by monsters. Meanwhile, soldiers from all over the city came to the same place. The military unloaded the rescued people. It turned out that the place where the survivors were taken was once a four-star hotel, but it was like that from the beginning. Now, it does not fulfill its function. At the front desk, each person was given a box of things. After receiving this box, they had to walk with it to the second floor. The teacher and the girl were on their way to the second floor. The schoolgirl was simply shocked by such luxury. She had never been to such places before. The soldier led Huang down the corridor. He told him that the room had many things, and even a bathroom, but unfortunately it was forbidden to use it because there was no water in the hotel. On the way, the soldier met two men who told him that they had nowhere to sleep. The soldier angrily told them to find their own way out of the problem. They had very strict rules at the shelter. All the doors had to be open. Our hero put on the respirator he had been given. Now, he could not smell the girl at all, and she was safe. She opened the door for Hoon, and as soon as he walked, and as soon as he walked in the girl, stopped feeling confident. She took a homemade bat and told our hero to hold his head so that she could destroy him at once. Hong did, so he tilted his head, but this posture seemed very strange to Yang Chu, and she ordered him to walk as he had walked before. Toward evening, Bokor's base was bustling with work. People were already finishing building Bokor's kingdom. As the workers cooked the containers, they noticed that Jamal had been sitting by himself for some time and was sad. Pastor notices this and decides to tell the soldier about who Bokor used to be. There were all kinds of people here, and not everyone understood the majority language. 
for which case Pastor drew a whole scrapbook of Bocor's life. How Saint was born is unknown. At the age of 15, he faced a severe ordeal. He contracted a rare disease that left him unable to move and cancerous cells spreading throughout his brain. Bocor was abandoned on the side of the road, and then he was found and taken to the hospital where the yellow-haired doctor worked. But he fell into the eternal sleep of coma from which he could not awaken. Fifteen years later, he woke up. When he regained consciousness, the doctors gave pessimistic prognoses and thought he would never wake up again. Another piece of unpleasant news was that his cancer cells woke up along with Bocor. There was absolutely nothing the doctors could do because his disease was super rare. He was eventually discharged home because the treatment would have cost Bocor a hefty sum, and he certainly couldn't afford it. The cancer cells completely took over his body. He was spreading twice as fast as the others. As he stepped outside, the saint wondered why he woke up in these particular times. Bokor came to the church. He sat down, and everyone immediately started discussing and despising him. He heard it all perfectly well, but he didn't pay much attention. The man in the jacket began to make a speech. He said that the world would end, and no one knows when that day will come. As the old man spoke, Bokor began to cough. With each breath, he coughed harder and harder. Everyone around him looked at him in disgust. Bokor coughed until he bled, and when his blood got on the other people's faces, they turned into zombies after a while. They all started attacking the old man in tuxedo, like hungry animals. He, meanwhile, hid behind the microphone stand. Bokor came on stage and said that he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The Creator's Son went to the rescue to sanctify all involved in the resurrection. Those who were destroyed would live and go to heaven. Sometimes Bokor's deeds were hindered by the military. They could not understand the meaning of heaven, but Bokor was not afraid of them. He believed in his enlightened zombies. The monster dodged a bullet, and the humans, too, became on the path to resurrection. Bokor has been tried a bunch of times. Even when he wanted to be run over by a car, he luckily survived. After all, that car was hit by another car. In the hotel across the street, Bokor saw frightened people. He took and threw a brick through the door windows. By doing so, he let the zombies smell them, and then destroy them. Looking at all this chaos, he was happy. Jamal viewed the story and realized that Bokor was the first to make this disaster happen. Looking at the zombies, Pastor said they were reborn, though their bodies and souls were in heaven. Bokor's vocation was to save souls who could not go to heaven themselves. And his subordinates tried to help the monster with that. Jamal came to his senses and said he would help them too. Other people watched the pastor from the sidelines and said he was great. Without understanding Jamal's language, he was able to preach the gospel to him. Suddenly, Bokor got out of his container in a rage. He was freaking out and saying that there were intruders in the school. The king ordered an elite force to be assembled, to clear the school, and to take those who had just come for training. Young Chu told our hero about Bokor and how he was the first to infect everyone. Hong asked how she knew about it, and the girl said that she had seen it with her own eyes. On that day, the day of the first outbreak of the virus in one church, everyone turned into zombies and wreaked havoc. Young Chu and Hong climbed onto the same roof from which they could see the very church. Rumor had it that Bokor was immortal, for more and more of his fanatics were following him. Hoon wondered at this point why no one still knew who the first infected were. The woman explained the reason for this, because the virus was spreading faster than the message was getting through. The boys crossed the rooftops until they came to the girl's hideout. She told the hero to change his clothes because the school uniform was unfit for protection. Even if our hero is a zombie, he'd better wear thicker clothes in case someone attacks. Unexpectedly, Young Chu asked how Hong was flying when he tried to attack her. The guy said that when he smells blood, all the cells in his body come alive and he can jump high and his physical abilities improve as well. But the bad side of such power is that the smell of human blood awakens the desire to attack. But Hong found a loophole. If the zombie is constantly exposed to the smell of warm blood, 
Gradually, the thirst will become controllable. After these words, the girl took out a special mask and offered our hero to hold his breath. The boy put it on, and when the girl presented her blood to Hun, the demon came back into him. Our hero felt great. Without biting anyone, his thirst gradually subsided and his body was filled with strength. It was because the smell was directly transmitted through the hose. The effect of a couple of drops was the same as that of a whole bag of blood. A girl standing in the aisle said something to Hun, and as she spoke, a zombie attacked her from behind. Our hero warned the girl in time, but she had no time to do anything. Hong saved her at the last moment. The boy took the zombie by the throat and dragged it with slow steps to the cliff from the roof. When he got to the cliff, he threw the zombie off the roof, and it fell, breaking its leg. The girl guessed that the zombie had climbed up here because it smelled her blood. The monster got up and looked up, and as if it had accelerated, it tried to climb the building again. That attempt was unsuccessful. The monster simply fell down and smashed its head in. After this incident, the girl asked our hero to take her with him. Meanwhile, at Bokor's base, the king himself and the doctor argued about who best to send on the mission. The doctor said that if they send a squad of trained men, they will not attack their own kind, mistaking the intruders for their friends. Baker paid attention to the doctor's words. Then the doctor took out a syringe with a special serum inside. This liquid will help the zombies awaken a strong rage in them so that they can attack. The king forbade the use of the serum, for the rage was contrary to their mission. In the end, Bokor allowed the serum to be used, but only on two zombies. The special dead men were caught and strapped to a cage. These zombies were already in a terrible rage, but the serum would make them even more terrifying and powerful. The doctor approached June and administered the drug to him. It worked instantly, and the infected classmate became very strong and fierce. Such power made the doctor crawl back. Now it was not just a zombie, but a real killer cyborg. At the school, the surviving students began to observe a very interesting picture. They saw their formerly infected classmates running around the backyard of their school through the second floor window. The students guessed that the zombies now had a special training session. The bell rang. The children were frightened. But then they realized that the bell rang for the zombies, which meant that their training was over, and now they would begin a new exercise. Junho gave everyone submachine guns, and now the zombies will have a shooting lesson. Hyunho also showed how to reload the machine guns correctly, where and how to shoot to destroy his enemy. After a couple of seconds, the zombies repeated all the actions of their trainer. The school children were watching from the sidelines and were amazed that the zombies could shoot. Suddenly, someone asked what happened to their teacher. Some thought he was still coming back, but some saw that the teacher turned around and left them here. Unlike him, the zombies didn't do that. On the contrary, they protected the school and the children inside. At that moment, Someone looked through binoculars and saw a car approaching the school. One guy thought it was a teacher and immediately got excited, but absolutely none of them knew who was really in the car. Through the binoculars, the girl saw that there were people in closed suits sitting in the car, and the most important thing was that they didn't look like zombies. Suddenly, Sujin stopped the car and Sam asked why she did it. It turned out that the woman wasn't sure if they should go back to school. The teacher himself agreed with her. He wasn't eager to go there either. The children wondered if they couldn't just stay in that bunker, because they could have just destroyed all the zombies that were there, and lived in peace. But Miss Sujin had a problem with ammunition. There were less than the number of zombies. The teacher sternly told them not to get their hopes up for such a luxury again. For the greater the expectations, the greater the disappointment. Now, the guys acted on the physical education teacher's plan. His plan was for them to go back to school, think about all the next steps, and then go in search of rescuers. At the same time, our hero girl obtained a new supply of blood. Hong immediately took the bag and used it for himself. The blood in the bag was no different. It turns out because the smell was quickly assimilated, the hero did not notice the difference. They walked on and on the way. 
Hong asked if she wanted to stay with him. She didn't want to go anywhere because it was very interesting to watch our hero. At the sanctuary hotel, the teacher left his room and went to the temporary commander's room. As soon as he entered it, the leaders immediately ordered the guards to throw the man out. The teacher came to the colonel to talk to him about something. After a few seconds of struggle, they did let him into the office. Teacher Huang asked if the leaders had ever heard of zombies who had intelligence. As soon as the military heard this, they immediately laughed and said that Huang was out of his mind. But such words did not offend the teacher in the slightest. He only wanted to tell the main ones about this kind of creatures with a spark in his eyes. Teacher Sam and the boys landed outside the school. As they approached the second floor windows, the children immediately said that the teacher had forbidden them to open the doors to anyone. Sam took off his protective mask and showed his face. And then he said he had come to check on them, but the children didn't believe him. They thought he had just run away with the others. At the same time, the colonel told the teacher not to talk nonsense and to go back to his room. He was already being forcibly dragged out of the room while he shouted that he was telling the truth. Unfortunately, the colonel did not believe a word the man said. Sam didn't know what to do. And suddenly he saw the first floor classroom window open. But it didn't really shock the teacher. Behind him, he heard the sound of a bus coming. The kids on the top floor looked through the binoculars and saw two zombies strapped to the bus. One of them was June. The bus flew almost at full speed into the school building. The chains on which the zombies were strapped couldn't hold and broke apart. The zombies also fell off the bus. One of them flew right under the feet of Sam's squad, and June's former classmate flew to the second floor, where our hero's trained zombies were already waiting for him. Zombies were scattered all over the school. One of them fell right under the feet of the teacher and Ian's, Su Jin, and the other flew into the window of the first floor of the school, right into our hero's trained zombies. There was panic on the second floor. The surviving students learned that the zombies were here again, and they also saw that their former classmate Hong Goon had turned into a dead man. The guys didn't really know what to do because they couldn't leave this place. And suddenly, Jin Su Hyo told them not to panic because he believed that the zombies on the first floor could safely handle the ones that had just arrived and attacked the school. As soon as the classmates heard this, they thought he was crazy because running away from the zombies and hoping for their help was a bad idea for them. One of the surviving classmates looked out the window and watched the situation of the teacher and Mrs. Su Jin. Meanwhile, on the first floor, Hyun Ho quickly analyzed the whole situation, and after Hai Yun Ho said that the guy had changed a lot, the infected Hong Jun looked at Hung Ho, and after a few seconds, he pounced on him. At the same time, Hai Yun Ho pointed his assault rifle at the infected, and when the infected pounced on him, he pulled the trigger. Unfortunately, the frenzied and trained zombie dodged all the bullets fired. Hai Yun Ho realized that he couldn't do it alone, so he ordered the other zombies to open fire. The infected classmates aimed at the monster, and a few seconds later, many shots rang out in the school. Despite the bullets, Hong Jun was going for broke, and because of his resilience, he was able to destroy two classmates by smashing them against the wall. This zombie was like a wild beast. He was not satisfied with those eliminations, so he instantly headed towards the other zombies that were shooting at him. For a few seconds, the rabies. Infected zombie destroyed his classmates one by one. Among the crowd, the monster saw Hai Yun Ho, and as soon as the zombie realized that the guy was aiming at him, he immediately bounced to the side, and thanks to that, the bullets didn't hit him. A few seconds later, the infected zombies jumped on Hyun Ho. Because he was wearing body armor, the bullets didn't hit him. But due to the sheer number of shots, Hyun Ho was still able to toss it aside. The staggering zombie managed to get to his feet, and after a few seconds, he screamed at the top of his voice and ran at the guy again. At the same second, the teacher and Miss Su Jin tried to do something against the armored monster. The monster also screamed and ran straight at the people. The girl had a shotgun in her hands, and when she saw that the monster was approaching her, she immediately shot it in the head. But unfortunately, it did not help. 
because on the head of the dead man was a helmet that saved him from death. Despite the shot, the monster jumped on the poor girl and put her on her back. Then the zombie swung and wanted to hit her. But at the last moment, the girl was saved by the teacher. He held back the monster's arm. But the zombie was stronger. He threw the heavy man a few meters away with just one arm. The teacher decided not to give up. He quickly got to his feet. And a second later, he was already standing. The monster saw this. And since he was trained, he too made a stand and began to fight the man. The zombie attacked first. He tried to strike, and Sam, thanks to his skills, easily dodged the dead man. A second strike followed, but the teacher also easily dodged it. After successfully deflecting the attack, the teacher threw a punch and the zombie was unable to block it. But when Sam hit the monster, it clutched his arm and like last time, it threw him back a few meters, and without thinking long, it decided to try to bite the teacher. Miss Su Sun aimed at the men as the girl thought. Teacher Sam acted. He twisted the zombie and then ordered the girl to shoot him. Miss Su Jin did so. She fired, but the bullet hit the monster's body armor, so it didn't do any damage. The zombie, at the same time, managed to get out of the teacher's grasp, and with his strength, he lifted Sam up and then tossed him to the pavement like a toy. As soon as the zombie raised his hands to finish the man off, Missy's, Sujin reacted and shot him in the back. With this action, the girl drew the zombie's attention to herself. Seeing that the zombie wasn't doing anything, Sujin started shooting at the zombie without stopping. The dead man didn't care, despite the bullets. He approached the woman and looking straight into her soul, took the muzzle of the shotgun and squeezed it with a single force, and then threw it away. After the shotgun, the monster started to squeeze Mrs. Sujin's helmet. He placed his huge hand on the girl's head, and after a few seconds, the monster began to squeeze her head. After the first attempt, the glass of the helmet started to crack, and seeing this, the monster swung his free hand and hit the girl's head with all his might. From such a blow, the helmet could not withstand. In that place, it simply cracked. Selji and Sungmin were watching what was happening. Selji was very worried about the girl. She wanted to run up to help, but she was stopped in time by the guy. He told the girl to be quiet, because if she attracted attention, they would both get crushed. On the first floor, someone else managed to survive. It was Jizung. He watched carefully as that huge zombie pounded the helmet of the poor and frightened Mrs. Sujin with a series of blows. Finally, when he was done, the monster easily removed the broken helmet from the girl's head. From that, Mrs. Sujin screamed, and the monster was about to hit her again at that moment. And as soon as it swung, the trained Jisung fired several dozen bullets at the monster. All of them successfully hit it, but unfortunately, they also like the shotgun didn't do any damage. But still, this tactic worked. The monster flew aside, and thanks to him, the girl was saved. Mrs. Sujin looked through the windows of the school, and on the first floor, she saw Ji Sung. At that moment, the zombie was smiling, so it seemed strange to the girl. After a few seconds, she remembered that she'd seen it before. That time, when she was running away from school, her car was attacked by our hero. The girl remembered that he had an expression on his face, the feeling of which she could not understand. And looking at the dead man behind him, she saw the same rabid zombie who was rapidly heading towards the former student. At the last moment, Mrs. Sujin warned the guy, but his reaction wasn't enough to dodge the bloodthirsty monster. The zombie elbowed the defender and flew out the window. Mrs. Sujin reacted quickly, and despite the danger, she ran up to the zombie's body and snatched the gun from him. While looking at the weapon, she saw the good zombies aiming at the monster through the window. From what she saw, she realized that those zombies were safe for humans. After a few seconds, the trained zombies took aim and fired at the monster. Unfortunately, Hong Jun was also able to dodge all the bullets fired. Watching the attempted extermination, Mrs. Su Jin noticed that the good zombies moved as if they were a step behind, and even when they took aim, they fired with a delay. But the girl didn't have time to watch and analyze the zombies. 
she decided to study and examine the machine gun that was in her hands. To tell the truth, she didn't even know how to shoot with it, so she aimed it at the wall and fired a few bullets. Such a weapon was hard for a girl to control, so she fired in all directions because of the recoil. Once the kind zombies trapped the monster, it tried to escape from the classroom. Han Ho noticed this, and to prevent him from escaping, fired a shot at the monster ahead of him. It froze in surprise near the door, and then Hai Yun Ho told the other zombies to keep it out of the room. Hearing this, Hong Jun got angry, and using his strength, he kicked the door and ran to the second floor to the survivors despite the bullets. The monster ran with frantic speed and desire toward the bunker of the surviving classmates. He ran up the steps, and with all his might, he kicked the doors of the shelter. Hearing the loud banging, the children were frightened, and after a few seconds, they could already see the monster half climbing into their room. At the same time, Mrs. Su Jin approached Sam to see how he was doing. Fortunately, the man was fine. Then, the girl asked the children the same thing, and they said the same thing as Sam. Things were heating up in the school shelter. The children gathered, and despite their fear, they all started holding the doors of the shelter together. After a few minutes, they had managed to barricade the doors, and because of that, it was many times harder for the monster to get through to them. Teacher Sam and Mrs. Su Jin heard children screaming on the second floor. Sam wanted to help the poor children, but Mrs. Su Jin stopped him. She said that now, both they and the children were in the same situation. Instead of helping the survivors, the girl tried to help the zombie who saved her. From this, Sam was shocked. He thought the zombie was attacking her, but the girl said that these guys were good. Suddenly, Sam's attention was drawn to a sound coming from the bus. The boys looked over there and saw a man alive. He kissed the cross, approached the cage filled with zombies, and sacrificing himself, the man opened it. The zombies pounced in an instant and began devouring the man. The guy was satisfied with his action, and with a smile on his face, he left this world. Hungry and angry zombies ran out of the bus like a river. At the same time, Hong and Young Chu arrived at the place where Bokor's hideout was located. Not long after looking at the walking dead, the protagonist saw that among the crowd was the professor that Hyun Ho was looking for. Hong and the girl approached her. After looking at the professor, our hero asked the girl for a mask and a bag of blood. Young Chu gave him the mask, and our hero poured the blood bag on her. Young Chu asked the hero why he needed the bag, and then, after a few seconds, she saw Hong put the mask soaked in blood on the infected girl's face. After a few seconds, the professor started screaming and making strange noises. All her veins were pulsing and could be heard. Under the bright rays of the sun, Bokor crept up to the guys. Our hero immediately said his name, and as soon as the monster heard it, he asked what it meant. Because Jamal had called him the same name, Hong explained to the dead man that his name meant that he was the king of the dead. He could control zombies and awaken the dead with voodoo. Bokor thought about the hero's words, and after a few seconds, he said that it didn't sound so bad. But it wasn't quite right, because he wasn't the king of the dead, but the king of the world. Then, the dead man said that he recognized our hero by the color of his hair, for he had interfered with his plan at school. Bokor was also surprised that Hong could also speak and make conscious decisions like him. And afterward, Bokor asked, or was he a messiah too? Hong didn't understand what this crazy zombie was talking about. And after that, Bokor laughed. He thought that Hong could not be a messiah, because there was only one. The monster assumed that Hong had mutated due to some side effect. While Bokoro was talking, Young Shu discreetly picked up a large rock, and once she had it in her hands, she warned the monster before throwing the rock, and it dodged it. Bokor turned angrily and said that he had not given her permission. He also said that many people had tried to destroy him, but all their attempts were unsuccessful. Suddenly, the monster pointed his finger at his scar on his head and then asked them or didn't know where it was from. He told them that it was a scar from bullets fired almost at close range, but missed their target. From that distance, 
his head should have been blown to pieces. But it wasn't. The feral dead man said he had an immortal body, and whatever was used against him, he would never leave this world, for it was God's will. When Young Chu heard those words, she was furious, saying that Bokor was the one who had destroyed their world and turned it into this, and that he had been the first to spread the infection in the church that day. And because of him, the world had gone to hell. Bokor said it wasn't an infection, but a holy salvation. Because of him, the world was reborn. After a few seconds, the zombie started rambling. He spread his arms and under the sunlight, said he was the Alpha and Omega, the Savior of the heavens. Hoon was sick of listening to this. His patience was wearing thin. The boy angrily said that only Bokor believed in his words. For Hong, the salvation was to teach his zombie friends to speak again and regain their lost memories. Hoon also said that Bokor made everyone in the world thirsty for blood and lose their minds. He took away their memories and threw them to their fate, wandering the soulless streets. It all felt like destruction rather than salvation. After saying that, the monster thought for a moment, and at that moment, Young Chu took a wooden stick and struck Bokor with all her might. He didn't even dodge because he was sure that he was immortal. But it was not so. Bokor flew into the container, and then feeling the pain he began to scream, when he saw the blood on his head, he couldn't believe it, because no one had ever heard him before. After that, the girl continued to beat the monster on the head with the baton, while she expressed all her thoughts about him. The almost destroyed dead man begged the girl for mercy. He was saying he was the Alpha and Omega, the first being, and she couldn't do that to him. The professor intervened in the opponent's conversation. Surprisingly, she looked like a human, but only on the outside she was a zombie. The professor said that everything Bokor said was a lie. The girl said that he wasn't the first disseminator. And as it turned out later, Bokor was just a mutant. From time to time, her lab received reports of unique mutations occurring among some critical patients. The monster's mutation was due to radiation therapy and the drugs he had once taken. All of these patients had left this world, and among them were patients in special situations that were never reported to anyone, and Bokor was one of them. At these words, the zombie became furious. He couldn't believe it, and to the end, he claimed that he was a messenger of God. After the professor proved again that he was a lowly mutated monster, Bokor couldn't take it anymore. He trembled. And gathering his thoughts, the monster ordered his soldiers to destroy the boys. After his signal, Jamal started shooting at the men. Hong reacted quickly, and in time took his friends behind a container, where they could hide from the bullets. Jamal kept firing at the boys' hideout, without stopping. Hong realized that he had to get out of this situation somehow, so he asked the girls to stay here while he did something. Our hero ran out of cover. Jamal saw this, and a second later he started trying to destroy the protagonist. Hoon, using his power, continued to run, and realizing that there was nowhere to run on the ground, he jumped up, and now he was dodging bullets by running on the containers. Jamal and Bokor were shocked by the abilities of our hero. The soldier watched in amazement as Hong jumped great distances, as if he weighed nothing. Jamal distracted, did not follow the trajectory of Hong's jumps. And it turned out that all this time, the guy wanted to run to the soldier's window. After a few jumps, Hong's foot flew through the window and hit the soldier. It turned out that there were other people in the room besides Jamal. They were surprised to see a zombie in the room. Hong did not pay attention to them. He just took the soldier's automatic rifle and with the help of his incredible strength bent it to such a state that it was no longer possible to shoot with it. Seeing this, people thought our hero was a demon. The doctor shouted that Hong was the devil. Despite all this talk, Hong successfully left the room and unexpectedly, he landed near Bokor. Bokor didn't do anything. He only said that our hero's school should have been destroyed by now. And after these words, he opened a container with trained zombies. Opening the container doors, 
Hong saw that a special iron mask was placed on the heads of the dead men. At the same time, when the enraged zombies ran out of the bus, Mrs. Su Jin didn't run anywhere. She pointed her automatic rifle at the dead and immediately began to destroy them. But the number of zombies outnumbered the number of rounds in the magazine of the machine gun. In the classroom, Hai Yun Ho saw that people were having a hard time now, and to help them, he told the guys to hide in the classroom. As Mrs. Su Jin and Sam climbed into the classroom, their backs were covered by Han Yun. When the guys climbed into the classroom, the other zombies ordered them to stand behind them, and at that very moment, the trained students began to destroy the evil zombies. Hyun Ho asked them to take shelter in the infirmary because it was much safer than the classroom. Sam and Su Jin did so, but before they went into the infirmary, the girl changed her mind. She wanted to fight the monsters because she had a gun in her hand. Sam changed the girl's mind, saying that she would only get in the way and provoke the zombies with her scent. As the doors of the infirmary closed, Sam abruptly realized that Selji and Sung Min were outside honed zombies. Su Jin reassured Sam. She said that the children were in hazmat suits, and so they should be fine. Meanwhile, the children were already surrounded by monsters outside. The zombies tried to smell them, but the protective suit the kids were wearing prevented them from doing so. Hyun Ho, seeing that the zombies had stopped freaking out, ordered his infected classmates to cease fire. The first floor was relatively safe, and so Hai and Ho as the leader said that some of them would go with him and the others would still guard the first floor as well. On the second floor, Hong Jun was still unable to calm down. He had been trying to break through the barricade that the surviving classmates had built for quite some time. But in an instant, all of their defenses were already powerless against this monster. Hong Jun accelerated one last time and hit the door with all his might. From this blow, both the door and the desks were scattered to different corners of the room. Hyun Ho and the rest of the zombies were already on the stairs. They were slowly but surely making their way to the second floor. Outside, Selji was panicking a lot, surrounded by monsters. She was very scared and asked Sung Min what they should do. The guy hugged the girl and said that he would definitely protect her, and hearing those words, the zombie in helmet and armor opened its fierce eyes. Sung Min claimed that they would be safe, and because they were in suits, the zombies couldn't smell them. But how wrong he was. After the words he said, the armored zombie hit the poor girl in the head with all his might. From such an impact, Silgi was thrown back a few meters. On the second floor, the situation was even worse. Hong Jun still managed to break through the children's defenses. As soon as he got into their hiding place, he immediately began to destroy the first people he saw on his way. Both Sung Min and the children in the shelter were crying and panicking. At the same time, Hong began to fight against several dozen specially trained zombies. Hong noticed that their movements were different from what he had seen before. So he stood up and began to fight against them. Our hero was able to dodge zombies without any difficulty at first. And some of them he could even fight back. Using his strength, he could handle one or two zombies, but not several in a row. Seeing that there were too many zombies, Hong ordered Yung Chu and the professor to hurry back to the school. Bokor looked at our hero with anger. He considered Hoon a heretic that he had to destroy at all costs. Young Ju and the professor ran to the first car they saw, and seeing that the keys were inside, they started the car. Hong jumped into the back of the car just in time. Strangely enough, the rest of the crowd of angry dead men chased after the car. Hong fought them off as they jumped toward him. After a few seconds, our hero saw that Jamal, along with a man, also got on the car and started chasing them. The soldier leaned out of the window and started firing his gun at our hero. As the chase began, Young Chu saw that Hoon was being shot at and swerved to get away from the pursuer. Unfortunately, she turned to the side where there were a lot of zombies and some of them started throwing themselves under the car and into the back of the car. Young Chu also saw this, and started doing her best to throw the pesky monsters off. Some zombies did manage to get a hold of themselves and try to climb into the back of our hero, but Hong wouldn't let them. As soon as he saw some attempts, he immediately threw the dead from the car. 
A few zombies still managed to sneak up on Hoon. He started dropping and destroying the zombies without any difficulty. At one point, the protagonist let his guard down, and a zombie who managed to climb up to him threw Hong off the car. In the rearview mirror, Young Chu saw that Hong wasn't with them, and so she braked sharply. Our hero had a terrible situation. He was being overtaken by rabid zombies. Hong came to his senses, and as soon as he stood up, he immediately shouted for Young Shu to keep driving, not to stop the car. Hong used his strength to push himself away from the wall, then from the zombie's face, and a few seconds later, he was in the car. Upon landing, he scattered two zombies, and they flew off the auto. This was the hundredth time Hong had told Young Shu to drive faster. And with this time, the girl finally pressed the gas pedal. Distracted by the zombies, the boys had completely forgotten that Jamal was another threat to them. The soldier and the driver drove around the houses and pulled out so that they met at an intersection. Before the collision, Jamal fired several shots through the driver's window, and unfortunately, he hit Yan Chu right in the shoulder. The fugitive's truck turned around and they came to a stop. Young Ju's shoulder was bleeding, and because they were standing still, the zombies could smell it. At the same time, the guards in the form of trained zombies on the first floor saw that that monster was still alive. They all opened fire on it together. Despite the bullets, the zombie survived, and at the moment when the guards were reloading, a crazy plan came into Sung Min's mind. As the monster was climbing up to the first floor, he grabbed the monster's head and tried to throw it back. The zombie was several times stronger than Sung Min, and with a single blow of his hand, he smashed his protective mask followed by another blow. But despite feeling so painful, Sung Min was willing to do anything for his revenge. He pulled back the monster's head, but the monster struck him in the face again, and the mask finally shattered. The young man's blood was heard by the zombies that were walking around. They instantly pounced on the guy and immediately began to devour him. While Sung Min was being destroyed by the zombies, despite the unbearable pain, he undid the clasp of the helmet and removed it from the head of the monster. Thanks to his brave and risky act, the trained zombies of our hero were able to easily destroy the annoying monster. As soon as one of the problem zombies was finished, suddenly a surviving classmate flew out of the second floor window. As soon as the guy landed, the other zombies smelled the odor from the second floor. They made a slide with their numbers to climb each other to the second floor. In the same room, the surviving classmates thought that now they will go to the other world. Because the zombies had already climbed to their floor, and there were only a few meters of distance between them. At the same moment, Hyun Ho and his subordinates came to the door of the second floor. They saw the situation there, and after opening the door, the guy asked the surviving classmates to leave. Jin Sung was incredibly happy that Hyun Ho had come to rescue them. He and the two classmates ran out of the room. And at the same moment, the kind zombies pointed their guns at the wildlings and quickly finished them off. After the shooting, there was no way Hyun Ho could find Jun. And at the same moment, Jun ran out of the shelter and dealt with several good zombies in an instant. At the same second, Su Jin heard gunshots coming from the top floor of the school. She didn't want to find out what was going on, so she picked up the automatic rifle and said that she wanted to help them no matter what. The teacher asked her to stop. He said they were helping by being here. For the girl, this was no reason to stop, she said. All the while, depending on what others had to say. After these words, she resolutely opened the doors and left the nurse's station. Sam continued to stare at the closed doors of the study. At this point, he remembered the conversation back in that shelter where he had talked to the barber and how the kids wanted to give up. Even though Mrs. Su Jin had gone off to fight against the zombies alone, Teacher Sam was left standing there, alone with his thoughts. At the same second, Jun attacked Hyun Ho. He knocked the assault rifle out of the guy's hands and pinning him against the wall, he started choking him. And then Jun threw Han Ho on the floor and started beating him with his fists. Hyun Ho, as a man, started to defend himself and blocked the blows of his former classmate. The surviving children watched from the side as they came closer. Jun smelled their scent and looked at them with fierce eyes. 
Mrs. Sujin appeared at the last moment. She distracted him and the zombie pounced on her a couple seconds later. And so, even though Mrs. Su Jin couldn't fire the machine gun properly, she was still able to aim and take down the pesky monster with an accurate headshot. But even after killing the zombie, their problems were not solved, as zombies began to climb into the windows of the first floor in huge numbers. Hyun Ho, as the leader, ordered all the people to go to the roof of the school building to escape. And while slamming the door shut, the zombies couldn't smell them and still stopped. After closing the door, Jin Sung tearfully knelt down in front of Hyun Ho and sincerely apologized to him for once bullying him. And then he thanked the guy for saving him. Hun Ho didn't take offense to his former classmate. He told him that they were friends. The other girls cried from that moment. At this point, things were not going well for our hero right now. The zombies smelled Young Shu's blood, and with the whole crowd they ran straight at her. As soon as the girl wanted to move, Jamal shot out the driver's window, and a zombie jumped onto the windshield. Luckily, the girl was able to get back from the bullet shot, but the zombie on the windshield was dealt with by Hong. He easily threw it off, and leaning against the windshield, he asked Young Jay to drive faster. But the huge crowd of zombies, as well as the soldiers' gunshots, kept them from getting through at all. The zombies that were walking around started to attack Hoon. They all jumped onto the back of the car at once. At this point, Young Chu started to think of something. She managed to escape from the trap and drive through the abandoned cars. A few zombies still remained in the car, though, and Hong scattered them to different sides of the street as usual. But now, the other problem was Jamal. He and his driver were following the guys again. The soldier leaned out and shot the rearview mirror so Young Chu couldn't see them. The girl, to save the situation, steered the car between the houses. Jamal didn't stop shooting until the last one. They were driving on a very narrow road, and the pain in her shoulder was making itself felt, and at some points, Young Ju might not be able to control herself. Driving between the stores, our hero saw a very creepy picture, as if they were in a horror movie. From all sides, zombies stretched out their arms and blindly tried to cling to the car. The picture was very creepy. After a few meters, zombies began to appear, jumping out of the windows and throwing themselves at the car. One of them managed to get into the back of the car, but as soon as it landed, it was immediately thrown off by Hoon. Losing vigilance, our hero missed the zombie, and it jumped right onto the roof, and the other one got caught on the driver's oar. The zombie jumped straight to the roof, while the one on the roof was dealt with by Hong. After a few minutes of driving like this, the guy's car pulled out of the narrow alley, and now they were on a wider road. As it turned out, they met up with Jamal again. He stuck his head out and tried to shoot at Hoon again. Luckily, Hong was holding a zombie, and it served as a good shield to shield him from the bullet. At high speed, Yeon Chu didn't notice that there was a guardrail in front of her. To avoid hitting it, the girl steered the car into a neighboring building. Our hero flew off the back of the car. Fortunately, both girls were fine and there were no casualties. Hong, a few seconds after their accident, heard Jamal's car passing near him. The protagonist was smart. He got in front of a guardrail so he couldn't be seen. The soldier's car stopped in front of Hoon and looking at him with a cruel look. Jamal ordered the driver to drive into the guy at full speed. This was exactly what Hong was waiting for. As soon as he saw the car go, he waited for the right time and at the last moment, jumped up using his superpower. As expected, the car flew into the limiter at full speed. The driver did not even have time to press the brake pedal before the car crashed. Since the driver was under the belt, he stayed in the car, but Jamal flew out through the windshield. Hong. The first thing he did was run to Young Shu. He asked, or she was fine. The girl was fine, but here the professor went crazy because her mask fell off and now she looked like those horrible and hungry zombies. The protagonist ran to the car and taking off his mask, he put it on the girl. After a few seconds, she was relieved. In spite of his heavy wounds, Jamal stood up and picked up his gun and continued hunting our hero. The man was facing the guy's car, and he thought that Hong was hiding there. Jamal shouted at the guy to stop hiding from him. Pointing his gun, the soldier started talking nonsense. 
he asked the hero why he dragged himself to Bokor if he didn't even understand his words. The man also said that Bokor was not uttering incoherent nonsense. Even he overcame the language barrier to fully support him. Jamal said it was the power of faith. The likes of our hero will never understand it. The soldier also said that Bokor would save the world. The main character was sitting on the roof of a building. He thought it was funny that turning all humans into zombies was salvation. And then the hero asked the man why he didn't want to become a zombie himself. The soldier said that he still had a lot of work to do, like helping to save people. After these words, Jamal pointed the gun at the interior of the car with a sharp movement. The man couldn't understand where the girls that used to be here had gone. And suddenly, our hero from the side asked or Jamal didn't want to become a zombie. The soldier turned his head sharply and saw the protagonist jumping right at him. And despite the shots, Hong turned the first person in his life into a zombie. Despite the damage, the guy's car was able to start, and they continued on their way. Sitting in the back, our hero looked back and saw a crowd of angry zombies running behind them. Among that mob was the infected Jamal. As they drove away, Hoon looked at him. Vokor, meanwhile, ordered his subordinates to send drone and find out how things were going. Bokor himself was in the infirmary, his wounds being treated by a doctor. While treating another wound, the doctor said that it would hurt. These words made the dead man very angry. He said he didn't feel any pain. The man asked him to calm down so that he could treat the wounds. Because if there was an infection, the doctor managed to say this before the monster started screaming again. Bokor said that he can't get hurt because he is the voice of God. He also repeated that he can't leave this world, and he feels no pain. Bokor was furious with our hero. He was saying something to himself under his breath and looking at his hand angrily. The doctor stopped treating his master's wounds and took a plate of human food and asked him to eat to heal at least a little. This action provoked Bokor even more. He knocked the plate out of the man's hands with one swipe of his hand and told him that he did not need human food as he was protected by higher powers. From not knowing what to do, the man bowed and asked his master to just rest. The doctor left the container and walked out to the people. The others gathered in a crowd outside the infirmary. They had all heard that their lord was injured. They were a little disappointed in Bokor because of the fact that he was bleeding. People were also asking the doctor if it was true. The doctor was also furious and he shouted to the people that if he knew that someone was spreading rumors that Bokor had been injured again, he would be severely punished and would not be saved. After these words, all the people sadly went about their business. Only Pastor remained near the doctor. He told the doctor that the soldiers sent to the school, as well as Jamal, had failed in their mission. After thinking about the information, the man asked Pastor not to tell Bokor anything for the time being. After a while, the car with our hero reached the school. The surviving students watching with binoculars saw a car on the horizon, and as soon as Hein Ho looked at it, he realized that it was Hoon. The friends left the car, and on the way out, the professor asked the girl to let her examine the wound. Young Chu was afraid at first, because the professor had wanted to bite her before. But now it was different. Since the professor was wearing a mask, she could control her thirst. As soon as the woman began her examination, Hyun Ho came running over to them. And so, after a long time, old friends met again, but already in the guise of zombies. Next, Hyun Ho said hello to Hoon, and following Hyun Ho came Jun. He also greeted our hero, and unexpectedly for Hoon, Yuna came out to greet him. Her first word was the name of the protagonist, which made Hoon embarrassed and suddenly his heart beat even faster. Yuna touched Hong's face, and with tears in her eyes, she said that it was bad to receive the wounds. What was happening surprised our hero very much. He did not understand why Yuna was crying, and also surprised that his heart was beating twice as fast as usual. The professor told Young Ju that she couldn't stay at school anymore, and then the girl said that she needed to repair her wounds and examine her body. And since she had become a zombie, she needed to go to the nearest hospital. 
Hun Ho heard the plan and told the professor that here was a jeep he stole from the military. At the same time, Su Jin opened the doors of the infirmary and told Sam it was time to move on. In the storeroom, the girl took the protective suits and gave them to the surviving students. And in a few minutes, both humans and zombies left the school. Stepping outside, Sam was surprised from the fact that there were hardly any dead people on the street. When Su Jin left the school grounds, she met our hero. She recognized him as the zombie who had surprised her with his facial expression that time. For the sake of her safety, she asked Hong if he could contain himself without the mask. The guy asked Su Jin to trust him. Looking around, Sam saw that Selji and Sungmin had been destroyed, and suddenly Hong came up to him. He really scared the teacher. The hero told Sam that it was time to move out. A few minutes later, the zombies and survivors were already gathered in the car. Already close to nightfall, the boys arrived at the school. And luckily, there was light on one of the floors, thanks to a working generator. But the third floor was full of zombies. To solve this problem, Hong and Jun simply closed the doors. On the fourth floor, with the lights working, there were no zombies. While they were talking, Hyun Ho came up to the guys. He said that here was the operating room. The professor had already started working there. At the same time, in the operating room, the professor was treating Young Shu's wound. The survivor was very worried because she was now in the hands of a zombie. The professor saw this and told Young Ju not to worry because thanks to the mask, the professor could hold back. Besides, this was the first time for the woman to be able to remember all her medical skills from high school. In the end, the professor said that the bullet didn't hit Young Chu's shoulder badly and said that in a few days, the girl would be back to normal. As night fell, Hong was assigning everyone to rooms he asked Young She and Su Jin to stay together, and they agreed. Entering the ward, the girls immediately found a common language. They began to discuss everything that was happening, and also the subordinate zombies of our hero. Su Jin said she was a little nervous, and Young Ju agreed. She said that even seeing everything with her own eyes made her nervous too, though she's trying to stay calm. They used to hide from zombies, but now they sleep in the same building. Next, the girls started thinking about what they should call the zombies. There were many options, but at one point, Mrs. Su Jin said they could ask Sam's teacher, since he was much smarter than them. On the corridor, the professor said that someone had to go get food and water for the humans, as well as glasses for Hyun Ho at the store. Without thinking long, Hoon agreed to this suggestion, and suddenly, he saw Yuna pulling his hand as well. He asked her why she was doing that. Yuna said that she wanted to go too. Hearing those words, Hong blushed. Gathering a small team, the professor said the boys would go closer to dawn. Meanwhile, Mrs. Su Jin went to Sam's room as she entered. She saw the man sitting sad on the bunk. She asked him what was wrong. Sam said his resolve had weakened. He clutched his face and began to ask himself questions that he didn't know the answer to. He had a strange feeling when he was helping the kids. He felt like he had to fight for his life to save the children's lives. Su Jin looked at the man unhappily and then asked, or did he want to hear a thank you? Sam didn't need that. He said that when he saw Selji and Sung Min's bodies, it was as if something inside of him turned upside down because they had left this world so suddenly. Su Jin started to support the man. She said that they were just like that because they don't know when they will leave the light or turn into zombies. She asked Sam not to be a hero. After a brief motivation from Su Jin, Sam suddenly asked if they would condemn him if he ran away. The girl unthinkingly said they would condemn him. When the girl asked that for making some decision, he was not even ready to bear the corresponding guilt. Sam remained silent. Su Jin also said that there were no rules or laws in the world. And if it could be immoral but not forbidden, then it was up to the man's own judgment. After saying that, she turned around and at the exit. She asked the man not to worry. After all, he was also a human being. At the same time, in the special military shelter, Teacher Huang was sitting on the bed thinking about something. 
Then he jumped up and went into the corridor. After seeing that no one was there, he went up to another floor, and as he was walking down the corridor, he ran into a soldier who told Huang that he couldn't go there, and with a slap on the back, he sent the man back to his room. The teacher, unable to sit still, repeated his actions again. Huang had already come down and tried to get around the guards to get somewhere. He was caught again by a military officer who, like the last one, told the man that this was a restricted area and then asked the teacher how he had gotten here. Moments later, the military escorted Huang back to the room. Upon arrival, he asked the teacher to close his doors and stay out of the hallway. But even that didn't stop Huang. He waited for the guards to leave once more. And then after a while, he went somewhere else again. And this time, he finally reached his destination. Huang went to Hiro's house to check on her. The teacher approached the girl and asked her not to worry about him, but to take better care of herself. In those moments when he was not around, she should be able to fulfill her needs. After these words, a guard came into the room. He was already shouting and asked how Huang was here. Without thinking of anything, the soldier harshly ordered another soldier to take Huang to his room. On the way, the military man resented it. He was uncomfortable with that military man ordering him around like a colonel. After his indignation, the soldier hurried Huang up with a kick in the ass. Suddenly, the teacher stopped and started saying something to himself under his breath. The soldier asked him what he said, and turning around, the teacher said that he couldn't stand being cheated. After these words, he sharply knocked the machine gun out of the soldier's hands, and then with several blows, he knocked the soldier out, after which he turned around and looked, or there was no one around. At the same time, another soldier ordered the girl not to run away from the room, just like Huang. She said she understood. Then she approached Hiran and asked how long the girl had been here. The girl said that she had come here not too long ago, and then she asked where the woman had met the rescuers, and or were there more people on the street. The woman said she met soldiers in the street. She answered the second question by saying that there were no more survivors. The woman, after talking to the other girls in the room, went to the window and said that they had to prepare for a new life in a new world. Hiron didn't like that, and she asked the woman in a panic what new world she was talking about, and taking the amulet from around her neck, she said that the light would now guide them. The amulet had a built-in laser, and she turned it on, signaling to the watching group. After the signal was given, some group reported all the information to Bokor headquarters. The doctor heard about it, and he immediately ran to tell Pastor. What he heard made the man sad for some reason. The doctor asked Pastor what had happened to him. The man said that he didn't trust Bokor very much because before he thought that Bokor was half god. But now he couldn't imagine that he had been injured and had become so weak. At these words, the doctor became very angry. He shouted and told Pastor to shut up. He didn't understand how the man could say such a thing when he had even created a gospel about him. Next, the doctor was able to get through to Pastor, and after telling him all sorts of nonsense, he showed Pastor something new. Going to the end of the container they were in, the doctor opened the doors and then a large cage with zombies in it appeared in front of the men. Now, Pastor spoke differently. He asked when they would attack. And the doctor said the sooner the better. This time, the man decided to attack without Bokor's knowledge. So he was going to send all the angry ones to destroy the unwanted ones at once. In the morning, as told, Hong and Yuna went together to find food and new glasses for Hyunho. Among the walking dead, on the way, Yuna met a cat that wasn't infected. The girl walked over and petted the cat. Hoon watched from the sidelines. He was surprised that Yuna was the most emotional of all. Before, she couldn't speak for a long time, but her first word was the name of our hero. Just thinking about Yuna made Hoon's heart beat faster and faster. At moments, it was beating too hard or too weak that he couldn't even feel it. While Yuna was petting the cat, she told Hoon that she couldn't remember anything at all from her past life. And if the outlines of past events popped up, she still couldn't remember anything clearly. 
The last thing Yuna remembered was when the school was attacked by zombies. How the protagonist, despite the danger and fear, ran to save her. How Hong grabbed her hand and ran as fast as he could. All these moments, the girl remembers as if it happened yesterday. She said she doesn't remember who bit her, but she remembers some things very well. After saying that, Yuna started to cry. She felt very sorry for biting Hoon. She remembered how she had unconsciously succumbed to her instinct. She thought that deep down she was screaming to herself not to do it, but she couldn't overpower the zombie instinct. Covered in tears, Yuna apologized to Hoon. The hero did not want to see his beloved crying. He came up and took the girl's hands, saying that he did not blame her. After all, in such a situation, they should not blame anyone, because it is too late to think about it. Yuna clung to the guy and apologized to him again. After hugging the girl, Hong realized that she always felt guilty for biting him. Also, the hero felt that he and Yuna had an unusual bond. They were like rays of hope at the edge of the world. They walked among the crowds of zombies, and nothing happened. They were walking together, picking out things, looking for glasses for Hai Ho, going to the store, looking for what the professor asked for, food for their friends. They did everything to create new memories. After doing all their things, the couple started to have fun. They rode bicycles, swung on swings, and played the vending machine. Their whole day passed like a pleasant dream, as if in this terrible world. There were only the two of them. If, in the future, they can record all the events that happened, Hong can consider this day as their first date. At the same time, Jinsu was sternly talking to his classmates. He didn't understand how, in all the cases of rescue, they never once said thank you to their infected classmates. The girls were not happy to hear this from the guy. One of them asked, or was he now protecting the zombies? And then she said they were using blood packets to suppress their desire to eat. But who knew what would happen if they couldn't use them, or if something would happen in time? The girl was worried. What if the zombies suddenly went crazy and attacked them? She asked if at such a moment, Jin Sun would side with the dead and keep saying that they were friends. Suddenly, Hyun Ho came to their room. He brought them automatic rifles and said that in a bad case, they would definitely need them. After the guy handed out the machine guns to everyone, he said that soon there would be a shooting practice upstairs. In the lab, the professor found a clue as to why zombies are attracted to the smell of blood. And by that answer, she could make an antidote. The professor came out of the lab and told everyone that she had made a serum that should dull the symptoms of the zombies. Hong and Hyun Ho were amazed at the girl's work so quickly, she was able to create such a miracle in a few days. The professor also revealed that thanks to this serum, the zombies would not have to use a collar all the time, and administering this serum should ensure that the zombies would be 90 thirst free. After using the serum, it is theoretically possible to achieve 99.99 .99 suppression. Hong asked how the professor was able to create such a drug. The girl said that she didn't know anything after being infected, but after becoming a zombie herself, she became curious about why thirst appeared and how it happened. She used all her knowledge of blood to conduct experiments. She found the most significant difference between the blood of a healthy person and an infected person, and that was iron. The virus requires iron from other organisms. The girl also said that the blood contains iron oxide. It was the one that had taste and odor. Therefore, they can sense the blood of people flowing through the vessels and attack them. Suddenly, Hyun Ho wondered why they didn't react to coins and other metal objects, since they were also made of iron. The professor thought it was a silly but good question. She told him that the iron element in the blood contained in the heme was different from normal. Then the girl started talking about her serum again. She said that she added a lot of nutrients to it. But there was one catch to all this. The serum's effects had never been proven. The professor suggested that after the serum, the zombie could stay in a closed room with a human for more than a day. Then she said she needed volunteers to see if it really worked. People looked at her with surprise. After a while, Sam volunteered and was taken to a special room and given a gun just in case. 
The professor said if anything went wrong or if the zombie lost control and attacked, he should shoot it. The zombie test subject was Hyunho. He agreed to let the teacher shoot him in case of a problem situation. Su Jin saw that the teacher took the risk. After a few minutes, the teacher and the girl argued about the situation. Sam had full trust in his students and the effects of the serum, so he didn't worry much. The professor filled a syringe with the substance and injected it into Hyunho's neck, and then she removed his collar. When she left the room, she said that the boys should stay indoors for 24 hours. Young Ho thought this experiment was too cruel, for the men had risked their lives greatly for this experience. The professor only said that someone had to do it for everyone's sake. The teacher pointed the gun at the floor and reloaded it, just in case. Hyun Ho sincerely believed that nothing would happen, because he also trusted the professor and the teacher. At the same time, in the hotel, the military gathered in squads their leader standing on the stairs saying that today, their search operations would be focused on residential areas. The task of the military was to inspect the buildings where the lights were on. And after that, they should follow the instructions. The instructions said that the military was not to miss any survivors. After saying that, one soldier came down from the floor and approached the leader. The leader asked what unit this lost soldier was from. The soldier remained silent. He didn't know what to answer him. The leader did not want to wait long for an answer. He again, but with a shout, repeated his question. A soldier came out. He assumed that this lost soldier was from the fourth search unit. The leader immediately ordered the soldier to return to his squad, which he did. The head of the search team asked the soldier where he had gone and why he was late. The soldier apologized to the chief. Meanwhile, some squads were already going out on missions. One of the soldiers of another squad suspected something wrong and turned to the late soldier. He said that although they were from different units, they wore masks and it was impossible to know who was really there, but he could tell from their voices that there was a traitor among them. At that time, the second floor security guard was checking the rooms, and the man saw that the door of the room was closed. He went in and heard screams in the bathroom. When he ran into the bathroom, the soldier saw a bound man lying in the bathtub. The soldier asked the unknown man to remove his mask. Suddenly, the soldier who saw the bound man came to the captain and reported the situation to him. The soldier who wanted to find out who was hiding under the mask had run out of patience and pointed his machine gun at the man and repeated his request. As soon as the unknown man revealed part of his face, it was clear that it was Teacher Huang. Suddenly, their conversation was interrupted by another military man. He said they were attacked in the dark. As soon as the soldiers turned around, they saw that a huge crowd of dead people were running straight at them. All the soldiers left the hotel and went out to look for the zombies. They didn't know where their opponents were. Losing their vigilance, they slowly began to be destroyed by the zombies. And after a few minutes, there were over a thousand zombies around. The dead didn't stop attacking the soldiers. They appeared and appeared. There was no end to them. The soldiers who eliminated the zombies in the armored vehicles after a few minutes were destroyed. The military did not stop shooting and destroying the zombies, but they were several hundred times more numerous than the soldiers. In the pitch darkness, someone thought of firing a signal fire, and the light from this fire illuminated a large part of the area. Thanks to this fire, the soldiers in their positions saw what chaos was going on here. They kept shooting back, but after a while, the first line of defense was completely smashed. The soldier told the colonel that this was not a spontaneous attack. The zombies were acting as if on someone's orders for some reason. The colonel couldn't believe it. He knew that the opponents were mindless zombies, and zombies couldn't strategize for an attack. The colonel instantly ordered to reinforce the formation and fire relentlessly at the zombies, and use whatever was at hand. The soldiers set up a new line of defense, and relentlessly began to destroy the zombies. One of the soldiers saw that all the equipment was surrounded by zombies, and to get the support of heavy weapons was simply impossible. On the battlefield, there was everything. Bullets, explosions, as well as fire. The military shot back as best they could, 
and suddenly someone turned on a searchlight and began to shine on the monsters. This really helped the military in the darkness. All of a sudden, the soldiers started falling because of bullets hitting them. Also, someone broke the spotlight. It turned out that the zombies had guns. The soldiers abruptly lay down and hid behind the bags. They were surprised that the zombies could use weapons. And when a soldier looked out and saw that there were two dead men with weapons in their hands on the horizon, as soon as the zombies took out some floodlights, they instantly started attacking the unlit shelters. At the same time, the colonel came to the commander and told him that the defense lines wouldn't last long because there were too many zombies. Since it was now dark enough, the commander could take shelter on Docto's ship. This shit was the last destination of the survivors. The commander checking his revolver clip asked the man how many survivors could be moved to that ship. The colonel said that it was absolutely impossible to move survivors now. The commander couldn't believe what he was hearing. He said it was their duty to get the survivors to Docto's ship and get them to safety. After that, the colonel said that the situation had changed, access to the helicopter was blocked, and zombies had surrounded the building. The colonel also told the commander to leave the base to the soldiers downstairs, and then he asked to let at least the people from the command center escape by helicopter. The commander didn't like it. He didn't want to leave the soldiers on the battlefield and throw the survivors to their doom. Outside, the zombies saw soldiers standing in the windows of the hotel. They started to break the windows without a second thought and pounced on the people like wild animals. Now, the situation was much scarier. Several zombies entered the hotel, and a few more ran to the floor where there were survivors. The zombies from the street began to gradually penetrate into the hotel, their numbers increasing several times. Near the temporary commander's room, the colonel was telling the commander that they couldn't even save the soldiers, let alone the survivors. The commander said it was against his principles. He couldn't just do that. The guards on the floors of the hotel began to fight the monsters. There were a huge number of zombies, and the soldiers could not cope with them. Survivors heard the noise and screams and came out of their rooms to see what had happened. There was a conflict between men from neighboring rooms, and during this conflict, one of them saw a number of zombies running towards them. A few minutes after the attack, the whole area of the hotel was completely covered with zombies. The colonel had told the commander that they were trapped, and there was almost nowhere to retreat to. And right now, principles were out of the question. The colonel and the commander then began to argue, and while the colonel was yelling, the commander was attacked from behind by a zombie. The colonel was horrified at what he saw. As soon as the zombie destroyed the commander, he switched to him as well. But luckily, the zombie was destroyed by the military man behind the man. The colonel thanked the soldier and then told him to follow him. After a few seconds, the men went up to the roof where a helicopter was waiting for them. The two remaining soldiers fought to the end. Their retreat routes were blocked and their ammunition was running low. One of the soldiers said they still had a helicopter, but his comrade disappointed him by saying that the commanders had left on it. Meanwhile, everything was ready for takeoff at the helipad, and as soon as the military got into the helicopter, zombies also ran to the roof, slowly taking off. The colonel and the soldier saw the zombies trying to get to them. The soldier picked up a machine gun and immediately started shooting and destroying the zombies that were trying to get to them. This shooting continued until the helicopter gained enough altitude. But the zombies were crazy. One of them pushed off his comrade and jumped onto the chassis of the helicopter. He grabbed onto them and continued to hold on while the helicopter was airborne. A few more zombies jumped after this one, but the soldier was easily able to destroy them. After a few minutes of shooting, the soldier ran out of ammunition, reloading the machine gun. He dropped the zombie hanging on the helicopter. There was no threat to the helicopter now. He rose high into the sky and flew away. The two military men saw what was happening, and in the end, they thanked each other for holding on until the last and saying goodbye. One of them said that soon they would meet in hell. Meanwhile, the survivors in Hyron saw that a man had found a way out. They immediately approached him and stopped. The man didn't understand why they did it and then said that if they didn't hurry, 
the zombies could destroy them. After these words in the hallway, the girls saw the dead approaching them. The woman who signaled and the schoolgirl went into the room, leaving the others to their fate. The woman who signaled said that those girls accepted their fate and found salvation. After these words, the man realized that the girl knew that this attack was planned. The woman spoke strange phrases and asked them to follow her. Along the way, the man went on and on about his hunches and how he was right. Leaving the fire exit and going outside, the strange woman said they should follow the light. And turning on the laser again, she signaled her presence. Suddenly, from the darkness came a bright light from the headlights of a car. The driver pulled up to the guys and thanked the girl for successfully completing the Red Ray task. A few seconds later, the guys drove off in a car. At the same time, the pilot asked the colonel where they were going. The man told him to head for the west coast to the Docto ship. But since it was the final rendezvous point, the pilot said he would count them as the only survivors. The colonel resigned to defeat, said the outcome was a foregone conclusion. The question was how long they could hold out. He then said that the life of one commander was more important than the lives of 10,000 soldiers. After finishing his conversation with the pilot, the colonel turned around and thanked the soldier for saving his life. In honor of this, the soldier would be generously rewarded and promoted to second rank. The colonel then asked what squad the soldier was from, but he did not wait for an answer, because the pilot said that a ship was visible on the horizon. As soon as he flew toward it, he tried to contact the tower, but nothing worked. There was no answer. The colonel ordered the pilot to turn off the lights and land without connecting. As they flew closer and illuminated the side of the ship, the pilot and crew members saw a horrible picture. All the soldiers and members of the ship had been infected and turned into zombies.